State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848, may have the appearances, please. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments, and I would like to make a reservation of all my rights at this time. The individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing street clothes. And I do not consent to being called in name for the record. Noted. Mr. Brooks called the witness yesterday. There was an objection. I sustained it, but he also orally moved to dismiss, and I indicated I would take that up outside the presence of the jury. And I'm denying the motion without any further consideration or discussion by the parties. He listed two reasons. One was the, it had to do when he called the state of Wisconsin as a witness for failing to appear, and then for failing to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. There's no legal basis for those motions in law or in fact. Basis I'm not those. asking for any further commentary well, or p I, statements I object, on the issue. I object to that. And I intend to have you call the next witness. I want to state for the record that I intend to appeal that judicial decision made about the motion to dismiss. Noted for the record. All right, let's bring the jury out then. Actually, we did address subject matter jurisdiction. It still has yet to be proven for the record. And I wanted to address the fact with this is it Kohler? Is that how you pronounce the name? Kohler? We're going to continue with the witnesses. I, I address subject matter jurisdiction repeatedly. There's a written decision. I stand behind it. You have three witnesses that you subpoenaed. The state made arrangements for them to be here. Whatever order you want to call them in this morning is fine, but those three are here. That's what I was trying to address right now. I was asking okay, about the name. Okay, go ahead. What do you want to address? The, the, the Kohler, how do you pronounce the name? Kohler? Kohler? I'm still I don't having know. You'll have to ask the witness. I'm still having trouble finding the file for, for that particular witness. Yeah, call the jury in. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to... Mr. Brooks, you were well advised. These are your witnesses that the state made arrangements. You knew who was going to be called. I put that on the record yesterday. So of those three, however, whatever order you want, but I'm not moving past those three. I, I didn't to say jump any, to others. I didn't say anything about moving past the three. I know that. I, I just set the tone for today that we're going to keep moving. Okay. I simply stated I'm, I'm not ready to ask that witness questions if okay. I can't even find the I your paperwork. But that's you not having your paperwork on you, not anybody else. So what am I supposed to ask them? I, I can't answer that, sir. You, you know that. That's a rush to judgment. You can't rush mm -hmm. me to judgment when I'm notifying the court that I cannot find the record. Well, you did very find, well yesterday without your file. That, so I'm saying I, that I particular witness. I just, I'll make a record. Yesterday you asked a question. The, hold on a second. Can you have them step back out? Just they can. Yesterday you did said you did not have a file for one of the witnesses and you did a that fine was, job from my perspective. So I did what? You did a fine job. I just yeah, want to say they, my assessment. They also you did provided a good job. me with one sheet for that particular witness at that time. Okay. So I'm I just went off the of that three in paragraphs. How you're prepared or not is solely on you. You've had all of this information. Now we're at the end of the third week of trial. These are your witnesses. I presume that you are prepared in whatever way that is. <laughs> How not can I be prepared for I'm not so the witness is just supposed to get up there and just, I'm just no, like, yeah. I, I'm not going to uh, have this commentary, okay? I'm done. The jury's coming out. Be prepared to call So that's, the that's a rush to judgment. That is not a rush to judgment. It is a Again, rush to I'm judgment. It's clearly in. a rush to judgment if I'm telling you that I don't have the no, file. Right? In How am opinion, I supposed you're attempting to delay. So no, I'm not, I'm not attempting to delay nothing. You want to come check the boxes yourself? You always trying to pull some fast, fast maneuvers. Mr. Brooks. And uh, Miss Judge, Mr. Brooks, the jury's coming in. Yeah, Show and they respect they, to the they deserve jury. to know this too. It's still issues that need to get addressed. We didn't even address everything. Mr. Brooks, <laughs> I address all of the issues. No, I you still know. had another one that didn't have nothing to do with nothing we just talked about. All there right. was a whole other issue that needed to be addressed that I needed to and bring we'll on the record later. to your attention. We'll, we'll address it later. It needs to get addressed now before we go any further because it's it's an important matter. Just like the subject matter jurisdiction is important that hasn't been proven on the record. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, just this like is not the rush to judge time for evidence to be presented or arguments to be made by the parties. I can't even the jury present will any evidence. You won't disregard let me any evidence in the record. All of these statements made by judge. Mr. Brooks at this time. That's unfair what you're doing. The court will address legal matters outside the presence. Then we need Everyone to address the legal seated. matter that I was trying to get to and before you, you rush everything out. you may call your next out. witness, sir. I'm not calling any witness until I get an answer, Your Honor. You're a public servant. Mr. You're Brooks. You're supposed to be able to answer simple questions. Mr. Brooks. If I'm saying 
now I have to bring Call it to your attention. Call your next witness, please. That's the stage of the I have to bring at. it to your attention, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, I'm really seeking please to stop. bring an issue to your attention. I'm telling you to please, I'm asking you to please and stop. And I'm asking you because we, we have the jury present. I'm asking and you. We need to continue with the evidentiary phase of this trial. Call your next I'm witness. I'm asking you to address a legal matter. As you said, that those have to be taken up outside of the jury. I will there do that at the next matter. break. There was a legal matter that needed to be addressed beforehand I so we do don't it. have to take up time I will valuable do it at time the next break. afterwards to address something that needs to be addressed now that way mr brooks court and you yourself for the third are time, on notice. i will address it at the next break call your next witness please are you asking me i'm directing you to call your next witness your honor I'm, we're not going to move past this seeing as how you took an oath to protect the constitution i have your oath i have a copy of your oath Right here, the oath that you took, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, I'd like to continue with testimony. To we have witnesses waiting for you. Please call your next witness. The oath that you swore to protect the Constitution, which you are now not doing. Mr. Brooks, so you're going call against your next your witness, sworn please. Oath. You're going against your sworn oath. Mr. Brooks, call your next as you, witness. As you, as you notify the jury every time when there's legal matters, we take them out, out, uh, outside of their presence. And we're going to take the testimony right now. Call your next I witness. I merely seek to put you on notice on the record for something that needs to be brought to your attention and, and to the court's attention. And I will address it That's at the next That's what I'm break. really seeking to do. It's something that shouldn't have to wait because it'll take a valuable time later. At least if I notify you right from the onset, you'll already know what we're looking at and we can nip it in the bud before everything starts to roll. Mr. Brooks, it gets over, it gets I overlooked. will address it at the next break. If you want to write something down, that's fine and give it to my clerk. I have nothing in writing. I know there's witnesses available and ready to go. Call your next witness. Your Honor, this, uh, Your Honor, you have to answer this question. That's you're Mr. making Brooks, a judicial determination. Call your next witness, judgment. please. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. There's no rush to judgment. There is yes, a rush sir. to judgment. If you won't address a legal issue that I informed you that I had some legal issues that needed to be addressed before you just run right. Past Past that, Your Honor, you're a public Mr. Brooks, servant. Are you not? It a is nine thirty-seven. Call it is eight thirty-seven. Sorry, eight thirty-seven. You're right. Call your next witness, Your Honor. You're rushing me to judgment. There, there's no rush to judgment. Call your next witness. We had please. a legal matter that needed to be addressed, and I'm merely trying to and notify I'm the court. Telling you, I'm denying onset. the request to address it at this moment. Call your next witness. You said what? I'm denying your request to address it at this moment. Please how call. Can, how can you please? deny something that we're supposed to do before Mr. The Brooks comes out? Call your witness. I'm not, I'm not seeking to be disruptive. I'm just seeking to understand. Why we all we do this? Everyone every day. is in the courtroom waiting for you. Please call your, your next Honor, witness. We do this every single day. We've done it every single day. So I'm I'm simply trying to make sure that the court is notified. Of Put it in that writing. Need to be hand discussed. it to the bailiff, and if I deem it important enough to interrupt the witness, I will. But call your next witness. How can I? How can I? Call a witness and write something down and do You can both. take a minute this to write way. down what it is. This I'm is not the asking you why to... it needed to be addressed beforehand. <coughs> Mr. Brooks, that way the jury is remaining in this courtroom. Call your next witness, please. Your Honor, you're rushing me to judgment. There's no rush to judgment, sir. Are you or are you not a public servant, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks. Do I not have your oath of, of office? Under 90611, this court has the authority, as you know. Do I not have call... is this not a copy or I asked for certified copies that you said on record that you would not provide for, for no good reason? That these are three, sir. Three of your. You oaths are doing this, right and here. I've repeatedly told you. You can see the juries here. You're, You're doing, doing this. I, I, listen, I, we Your need Honor, to go I'm forward. I'm not attempting. I'm not attempting to delay the proceedings. I'm not attempting to be disruptive. I'm merely trying to notify Your Honor in the court for the record beforehand. That way, everyone's at least on notice of the issues that need to be taken up instead of waiting until a break or a lunch and, and things of that nature, which kills valuable time. In my discretion, time. it's my authority. It's the courtroom that I'm You're presiding right. over. I'm not going to address is that this, at is, this moment. Is this not your And oath? I'm not going to ans answer questions. Did you not questions. swear as a public servant that you would protect Mr. the United Brooks, States Constitution? Did you not do that? Witness. Three times. I have all of them. Here, your oath, Your Honor. As a public servant, and Mr. now you're Brooks, rushing me to judgment there's no when I'm doing judgment. things lawfully by trying to notify you and notify the court of issues that need to be addressed Mr. Brooks, beforehand. We are These in the evidentiary issues. phase of this trial. Your Honor, you're Call your next witness.
you're rushing me to judge me, Your Honor. And I object I'm to that. I'm aware of three witnesses I object, who are here. I object Call to one that. of them, please. Your Honor, I object to that. Your objections noted. And, I, and I want a legal reconsideration of your ruling. If not, I, I reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. I understand. I request a legal or a factual basis for your ruling, a written judicial finding of fact and conclusion of law for your ruling. And if not that, an interlocutory declaratory appeal for this matter. And if not, these needs need to be stayed until this matter is before a adjudicated court of competent jurisdiction because we have not proven jurisdiction in this court as of yet. Subject matter jurisdiction has not even been proven on the record, Your Honor. I don't even know the true nature and cause Mr. of the Brooks, charges against me. I don't even understand that part I of understand it. I haven't your been request. provided a complaint. I haven't, Your Honor, there's there's so many issues. Mr. Brooks, I'm not we will take... I'm not attempting to, Mr. To, Brooks, to be disrespectful in any way. We I'm need to continue. To delay the proceedings your requests are denied. Your Honor, I, I respectfully And I'm going to instruct the jury that. at this point to I disregard I and not consider that, any Honor. of what has just happened since you walked in, it should not be held against Mr. Brooks in any way. These are legal issues that this court may or may not need to address, but they do not bear in any way on ultimately the issues that these that you as jurors will have to decide. And I'm instructing you to disregard what you have just heard and seen. Your Honor, with, with everything that I just said, be part be made part of the record. It's on the record. I'm telling the jury that it shouldn't affect anything that they're doing in any way. Your Honor, it's a with that, to, it's a rush to judgment, Mr. Brooks. Because, Your Honor, I just showed your oath that you swore to took. You swore you Mr. did Brooks, this, Your Honor. Please call your next witness. You you took these oaths of offices. You did, Your Honor. Three of them. I understand which, my oath, which is sir, very very, very well. commendable that you know that you decided to be a public servant in this in these in, in these type of matters, Your Honor. I, I, I respect it to the fullest, but also it you, you have to uphold these oaths. That All you right, took, I'm going to have to excuse the jury since Mr. Brooks you have is not to, calling his witness. You have we'll to hopefully you have bring to, you back out shortly. You have to right. honor these 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 oaths of offices. You have to as a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect you being a public servant. And this is not to take a shot at you in any way, but these these Mr. issues Brooks, that I have, stop. Please they stop. need to be addressed. They need. I'm to excusing be. the jury. Can you please stop? Your Honor, this is a rush to judgment. This is a clear. This is a clear bias. Mr. Brooks, you are to stop talking. Are you asking me? I'm advising you, or you will forfeit your right to be present at this so courtroom for the contempt. questioning of your first witness. Because you're holding me in contempt. I'm not holding you in contempt. Then how can you remove me from uh, the, the uh, courtroom when I haven't given consent? Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you, you at this moment to call your next witness or you will forfeit the right to call these witnesses. You can't, you can't uh, take Under 90611, you, you are cannot, refusing you cannot, to call cannot, a witness. I didn't refuse anything, Your Honor. You can't, you can't deny me my Sixth Amendment right, which is Mr. to Brooks, call Mr. Brooks, do you want to be present in which this is courtroom witnesses. while you question your first witness? Because it is now 844 and you've consistently talked in front of the jury who's no longer in this courtroom on issues that you have been advised and are fully aware are not relevant to their determination despite what you this, believe the law this didn't have anything is. To do with the Subject jury, matter right? juris no you that's what that is what you referenced in front of the jury and then you referenced my raised the issues that I was Subject trying to matter raise. jurisdiction as you know is not as something I don't know. the state has to be the state it must prove it has to be and you are frankly confusing show me lawful law. civil show me jurisdiction law, in federal Honor. cases with criminal court jurisdiction in the state of Wisconsin. You don't have criminal. That we has been made abundantly clear. You don't have subject matter jurisdiction or personal jurisdiction. Mr. Brooks. Or personal jurisdiction. You don't. You haven't proven. You have not. You I, I proven excuse proven the, the jury. I'll give you the opportunity to raise whatever issue it was, but you need to do it now or we're moving forward. That's what I want to do. That's what so, I was attempting to do. And if you interrupt me one more time, you're going to go do it from the other courtroom. And, and because so you're, you're being me all right, I'm, he can go to the other courtroom, and we will address these issues. Because are you, you are not being respectful, you are disruptive, you are interrupting. I will give you one more opportunity. Don't interrupt me again. Don't roll your eyes at me. Don't sigh at me. You have delayed these proceedings now by 15 minutes because of your nonstop commentary. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to listen to you. What issue do you want to raise, sir? So, are you letting me uh, make an offer of proof for my appeal? No, because that's not what's relevant at this time, sir. If you you don't need to make an offer of proof. Tell me what the issue is. You okay. said you have a legal issue you want to raise before we get going. What is that issue? The legal issue is this: a detective Casey yesterday testified for the second time under oath in reference to exhibits 13 and 14. 
that showed backyard of my mother's home, which he stated that he had been to the home, had seen the backyard, all this stuff, when he did not, in fact, even speak with my mother. It was brought to my attention that my mother, in fact, never speak to, spoke to any law enforcement from Waukesha. Would you like to add her to your witness list to call her? Yes, I would. All right, that's because fine. Because she's that's willing, she's willing that. to come. But that's not something we needed to address this right away, sir. It needs right to be addressed because, because of the issue of the subpoena. That's the reason why it needed to be addressed. That's the reason why I was trying to attempt to it bring it to your attention. It could have been done on a break. All right, so would I be, you're putting, I have, you, you would like, you're asking me to add Don Woods to the witness list for you. Yes, but I also have a question of, about the subpoena. The subpoena for whom? For, for my mother. But I will also like to subpoena the phone record so it can be made part of the record of the conversation since the prosecution listens to all the phone calls. They should be able to have heard that phone call as well. So they should be on notice of what was said. I don't know what phone call you're referring to. If I'm you're referring, referring to, to a, a phone jail call phone from, call, I'm referring then... to a jail phone call that was made last night, October 20th, between 7.54 p.m. and 8.10 p.m., which I'm sure the prosecution has heard by now. And that also brings up the issue of perjury testimony. The way that you will address the issues that you're talking about are to call witnesses to challenge that or to present the evidence in support of your position. If you're telling me you need to add Dawn Woods to the witness list, I approve of that. You can fill out a subpoena and I'll direct the state to serve that upon her and at the appropriate time we'll have her brought. We'll indicate when in the order of folks she can be brought in. So I'll grant that request. In terms to... of the jail records, you'll have to subpoena the appropriate custodian or a witness who can testify to that. That's that's what I was trying to gain knowledge of. Well, I, I can't I give you advice on that. I'm sir. not trying to ask for advice. I was is is can I is that that's asking for me, me to subpoena? For, I can't direct how you do that. I can't tell you how to do that. You are acting as your own attorney, and you will need to figure that out. So you have the subpoena forms. You can research the issues. You have access to legal research materials and other things, and that's how you'll have to address I that. I accept for value and return for value this document. Was that a subpoena form? Thank you. Is there any other witnesses you're asking to add to your, uh, and, and you can also call Detective Casey if you want, just so you know. So that make three times he's able to testify? If you believe he has information that he hasn't testified to, I will give you permission to call him as well. No, I don't think it'd be necessary. You know, he know, he know what he did, and he know what he um, didn't do. We're going to bring the jury back out, and then I expect you to call a witness. And and, what, and just so I'm clear, because I was trying to get to that issue, what witnesses are here? Because I, I don't have the, I don't have any any paperwork for Kohler, 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 Kohler. Kohler I, I don't know. Douglas Kohler, that. Stephen Guth, and Erica Patterson. Of those three, you, I expect you to call one of those witnesses. I accept the value and return for value this document. For the record, Judge Attorney Woodchow just handed to the defendant for his benefit as it relates to the statement of Douglas Fuller, and he's claiming he does not have it. Since I, I know that I don't have it, so let's make that record correct. I can't find it anywhere. You've had it previously. Yes, I had it at one point. Are you ready to proceed forward, Mr. Brooks? Yes. All right, let's bring the jury out. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Go ahead, call your next witness. Yeah, the defense calls Douglas J. Kohler. Go ahead, your witness. Good morning, Mr. Co Is it Kolar? Kolar. Kolar. Good morning, Mr. Kolar. I want to direct your attention to November 21st of 2021. Do you call that evening pretty well? Fairly well, yes. Well, let me back up for a minute. First of all, what do you do for a living? I'm an IT director for a law firm. Been doing that for a long time? Uh, I've been in IT for over 20 years. Directing your attention back to the night of November, or evening of November 21st, 2021. What did you do that day? Well, that day I was preparing my daughter to march in the parade with her dance troupe. Watched football earlier in the day and got her dressed and we had to change our plans last minute because my son was not feeling well. So it was just my daughter and I that went to the parade. And do you recall what time you arrived at the parade? Uh, it was at least an hour before the start time of the parade. And do you recall where you were positioned at in the parade? I moved with the dance troupe. I kind of going with the, going with the flow. Correct. And at, at some point you observed something happening. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Well, after my daughter had finished and I was walking back to our vehicle to go home, I noticed as we were approaching White Rock, which is what we were parked off of, I noticed a vehicle coming through where the parade participants were going. It was a red vehicle. It was honking its horn. It passed a few parade entries on the right-hand side, and then it 
passed a between two of the groups. It veered to the left and went around the next group on the left-hand side, at which point a police officer attempted to approach the vehicle. That police officer had reached for the door hand, and at the time of that approach, the vehicle started to speed off. I just want to back up just a little bit. You stated that you heard the vehicle honking its horn. While it was on White Rock Avenue, it was honking its horn. In your opinion, did the vehicle appear to appear to try to avoid hitting people? At that point, yes. And you made reference to it coming in, the vehicle coming in contact with an officer. Did you see where the vehicle went after that interaction with the officer? There was no contact between the officer and the vehicle. The vehicle attempted to make contact. The officer attempted to make contact. But after that attempt, the vehicle sped southward. You know, I know those streets don't run straight north south on Main Street. Did you notice the vehicle strike anyone at that time? I did not. And what did you do after you saw the vehicle? Once once it, it was out of your view? Once it was out of my view, I grabbed my daughter and walked as fast as I could to my car. To the best of your recollection, what, how would you describe the vehicle as far as a uh, make and model? To the best of your recollection. To the best of my recollection today, I only remember a red SUV. At some point, did you report to law enforcement officers which you had observed that evening? Tuesday morning following the parade, I sent an initial statement to the police. Would, would that have been uh, the Waukesha Police Department? Yes, it was to the Waukesha Police Department. Did you, you said you sent a statement. Did you initially speak with anyone uh, verbally? Initially, no, I did not. At some point, did you speak with someone verbally? Yes. And was that sometime after the Tuesday statement that you initially gave? Yes. Approximately two weeks after I made my statement, I was contacted by someone with the Waukesha Police. Do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? I believe the rear windows were tinted like most SUVs are. And after you had verbally speaking with law enforcement, did you do any follow-up on the reports after that? Yes. The officer that I spoke to had advised me to add to, to my statement the items that we had talked about. The, action, the, the law enforcement officer asked you to add certain things to your report? He, he had asked me some questions, and the questions that we talked about on the phone, he asked me to add to what I had initially submitted. And after that conversation, did you have any further conversations after that point? I had no further conversation after that. Point. Had you yourself been contacted by any uh, any further law enforcement after that point? No. So it would be fair to say that you were subpoenaed to testify at some point. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? I received my subpoena last Tuesday. And the 18th? Whatever day last Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Do you recall whom you received that subpoena from? The Waukesha County Sheriff, or you one recall? of the sheriffs. I'm sorry. I mean, or, or one of the sheriffs. And did you do any follow-up information once you received the subpoena? Like, like for example, calling the uh, district attorney's office? I did not call the district attorney's office. I did reach out to the clerk's office to see if there was any further information. Uh, were you or your daughter injured in any way during this incident? No, we were not. Uh, no further questions at this time. Hey, Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Cole. Good morning. Thank you for being here. To be clear, sir, the subpoena you received was issued on behalf of the defendant, Daryl Brooks, correct? I don't know. Not, it, that information was not filled out on the subpoena. Okay. You did um, provide a typed statement to the Waukesha Police Department, correct? Objection, Lee. And, sorry, overruled. Did you answer it? Uh, I'll ask again. Thank you. <laughs> you did provide a written statement to the police Department, correct, sir? Objection, leading. Overrule. It's cross 906.11, so two. Yes, I provided a written statement. And in that statement, you described the SUV as driving erratically down White Rock Avenue, correct? Objection. Did you testify to that? Um, that was asked and answered. Overrule. It's sub three, not sub two, by the way. It, yes, just the event of driving past some participants on the right and then veering to pass the next group on the left. You said at that point, the when it, the vehicle was on White Rock, it was honking its horn, correct? Correct. You, correct. There was no objection. You can answer. And you saw an officer run up and try and open the door to the vehicle, correct? 
I don't know that he was trying to open the door, just trying to, I don't know what he was trying to do. He, he ran and his arm had gone towards the door handle. Okay. And that was at the intersection of White Rock and Main Street, correct, sir? Yes. And you got a look at the driver of the car, correct, sir? Objection speculative. Overruled. Yes, I did. And you described the driver in your written statement as a black male with dark dreadlocks and visible tattoos. Is that correct, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. Is that consistent with your memory, sir? Objection speculative. Overruled. That is consistent with my memory today. Once... The vehicle went past the officer. You indicated that you saw it accelerate or speed off. Is that correct, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. 906-11 sub 3. Yes, at that point, it sped away. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Any redirect? Briefly. Referring to the written statement that was just testified to, to the best of your recollection, do you recall stating that the SUV was a, a older model red Chevy Blazer? I do recall putting that down at the time. That was at, at that addition that I added two weeks later. So at the time, at that time, during the, the evening of the incident, to the best of your knowledge, that would have been your opinion of the vehicle that you saw? It, at the time of, of that day of the raid, I, I just remembered the red SUV. To the best of your recollection, what 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 assumption will lead you to, to, to describe the vehicle as a Chevy Blazer? I believe in my assumption it was just to say it was a older boxy style SUV and in my mind that relates closely to a Chevy Blazer. Uh, no further questions. You may call your next witness. One second. If I may have just a quick second. The defense will call Stephen Guth. Go ahead, sir. You're with us. How long have you been in law enforcement? Over 20 years. And how long have you been a detective? Um, just over seven years. Directing your attention to the evening of November 21st of 2021. Do you recall that evening? I do. And were you on duty that evening? Not initially. For more clarification, what do you mean by not initially? It was a regular off day for me, but I received notification to respond <laughs> to the police department for the mass casualty incident. So at that point, I'm assuming you were dispatched to that location? I was not dispatched. I received a signal message. We use signal. It's an app that's used that we can share information for investigations. And I received a signal message that this tragedy just happened. And so what did you do from that point? I immediately dropped my wife and kids off and responded to the parade. And when you got to the parade, what did you do at that point? I went to the downtown area to assess and see what I could help with. At some point during your investigation, did you make contact with the woman by the name of Erica Patterson? Yes. And what was the nature of that, that part of your investigation? I wanted to speak with Erica Patterson because by that point, when I made contact with our command center, they had learned the name of Daryl Brooks and had learned that Erica Patterson was the estranged girlfriend of the suspect. You made reference to estranged girlfriend. What do you mean? I don't know if I should answer that. I think the question was pertaining to the word estranged, <coughs> but we'll move on. I'm assuming at some point you took a statement from Ms. Patterson? I did. Do you recall if it was recorded, written, you writing it? What was the nature of the of how the report was taken? Well, the her words were spoken and they were recorded, and then I prepared a report. Did you, did you prepare the report that same evening? No. When did you prepare the report? Well, sometime after the 22nd of November. Why not the same evening? Because after I spoke with her, I wanted to go back and speak with her again. Did you obtain any statements from any other people that may have been involved with Ms. Patterson? I did not. Do you know, uh, to your recollection, if... Any other officers have taken statements from parties that may have been involved with Ms. Patterson? Well, the night of uh, November 21st, 2021, I did have a partner with me, another detective. Do you recall him talking to any of the parties that may, been, may have been involved with Ms. Patterson? Well, the detective that was with me was a female, Detective Barron. The question was, do you know if your partner had any interactions with parties that may have been involved with Ms. Patterson? I don't believe so. Hold on, are you specifically see. referring to a date certain or just in general? I think he, I think it was clear. I need it clear be, for the record, though. The date would be on the 21st? 21st, 2021. No, I don't believe so. <laughs> Did you learn at any point that there may have been other parties involved with Ms. Patterson? In which incident? I'm referring again to November 21st of 2021. Yes. Do you recall who those parties were? Corey Runkle and Nicholas Kirby. 
did you yourself speak with either of those parties, uh, Nicholas Kirby or Corey Runkle? No, I did not. Do you recall if your partner spoke with any of those parties? Which partner? The, I'm, I'm guessing the female partner that you made reference to? No, she did not. And in that recorded interview with Ms. Patterson, what, do you, what did you learn about the evening of uh, November 21st, 2021? Which recording? Are there multiple recordings? Yes. What did you learn about the evening of November 21st, 2021 from both recordings with Ms. Patterson? Your Honor, I'm going to object at this point as this testimony covers ground that was very clearly covered during the state's case in chief. I'll give Mr. Brooks some leeway. You are asking for hearsay, though. You understand that. I asked him, what did you learn? I learned several things. Initially, Ms. Brooks wanted to report that she was injured by Daryl Brooks on November 20th which would have been Saturday. She say, stated that she met with Mr. Brooks at Frame Park and they were arguing over the fact that she did not give him money and he injured her by slapping her in the mouth and punching her in the eye. The next day, I went back and talked to her again and she clarified that that actually did not happen on the 20th, it happened on the 21st, and that she got in a motor vehicle with him over the same argument. He was mad that she did not provide him with money he proceeded to try to take her phone because he thought she was talking to other guys, slapped her in the mouth, punched her in the eye. She jumped out of the motor vehicle because she feared for her safety and made her way back towards Frame Park. While walking back towards Frame Park, she was calling her friends, Corey Runkle and Nicholas Kirby, come help her. When she arrived back near Frame Park in front of White Rock School, there was a confrontation in front of White Rock School with Mr. Brooks, Erica Patterson, Corey Runkle, and Nicholas Kirby, where there was some kind of shoving match and that's when Mr. Brooks got back into the motor vehicle and took off down White Rock towards Main Street. Erica Patterson then made her way back towards the Women's Center. You made reference to being told about an incident from Saturday, November 20th, and then stating that in the second interview, Ms. Patterson stated that it happened. Is that, is that correct? She didn't state that it didn't happen. She just stated that she didn't drive around with him on, on Saturday, November 20th. But she also met with him and was slapped in the mouth that day, too. If it pleases the court, I have a document here I would like to show the witness. All right, if the bail could have the state first to look at it. We may use the document camera. Before we go through that process, I'm going to object. Maybe Let me see the document. Office. Given the content of that document, I'll sustain the objection. Sustain on, on what grounds? It's not relevant. How is it not relevant? It's not relevant. You made reference to November 20th. That's what this document is talking about. It's not relevant to the charges at issue. <laughs> we can take it up later, and if need be, I'll let you recall the witness, but I'm directing you to move on to a new topic. Your Honor, I'm going to respectfully object to that and ask for a finding of fact. The objection's noted. It's sustained. Well, their objection's sustained. Yours is overruled. Is that noted for the record? I would like a written finding of fact. The request is denied. Keep going, please. Denied on, on what grounds? On what lawful law? Keep going. Are you making a district determination that you don't have to answer that question as a public servant? Sir, I've ruled on the objection. It's on the record. Please keep going. Once again, information that needs to be known is being hired. It's not relevant, sir. Please continue. It's very relevant. He just opened the door on that by saying November 20th. Objection. Move to strike all of the comments made by Mr. Brooks in the last 20 seconds or so, especially with regard to any implication that he hasn't had all of the discovery material. Objection. I never made any right. mention of not having any discovery material. That never the was jury will just disregard, as I've told the jury repeatedly, comments made or statements made by the parties, whether they be lawyers or the parties themselves, are not evidence, and you're to disregard them and not consider them in any way. And if the statement suggested facts that are not in evidence, you should not make that, should not consider that in any way either. Your next question. So is it fair to say that in your report you, you referenced two incident reports? Objection. This is Brown's witness wrote... Um, I'm going to overrule Five. the objection and let the witness answer it. I think it might just be semantics at this point, but go ahead and ask your question. You mean semantics? I think you were referring to that he had two... That's, a, that's what his report says. He makes reference to two, two reports, two incidents. Two incidents. Yes. Not two incident reports. Reports would be separate documents. That's what I'm talking about. And you're... Let me back up. You wrote your own report. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And in your report, you referred to two incidents. Would that be fair to say? Just to clarify, which report are you speaking of? I wrote several reports. The one written November 22nd of 2021. I do reference two reports and one cat call. What was the last part? Cat, cat call? A cat call, yes. Um, what, what do you mean cat call? 
A cab. 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 C A D. Cab. Cab. Go. What do you mean, cab call? What? That's a call for service that does not generate a police report. And what was that cab call? That was a call for service near Frame Park for a fight involving potentially a domestic related incident. You call any other details about that CAD call? There wasn't much in it because the officer had to leave to go to the parade. Do you recall a mention of a knife during that, uh, during that CAD call? Yes. To the best of your recollection, do you recall anyone recovering a knife or you yourself recovering a knife? There was no knife. But it is fair to say that that's how the CAD call went out, that there was potentially a knife fight. That's how it was initially, I believe, reported. You may reference, and I'm referring to the, the second interview with Ms. Patterson, you may reference in your report that in the previous interview that Ms. Patterson was not completely forthright. What exactly do you mean by not completely forthright? She did not give me all the details of the incidents to me initially. Do you recall why? I don't know why she didn't. So it would be fair to say that Ms. Patterson had been untruthful with you in the first interview? No, she told me she was extremely afraid of you, and that's why she didn't want to tell me everything. Well, you just stated that you didn't know why she was not forthright. I can't read her mind, but that's what she told me. At any time during your investigation in regards to the incidents with Ms. Patterson, did you at any time see interviews that were conducted with Nicholas Kirby and Corey Runkle? What do you mean by see them? Had you seen any statements made by the, uh, those two parties? No. Would it be fair to say, assuming that those two parties were present for the incident on the evening of November 21st of 2021, would it be fair to say that at some point they were interviewed by law enforcement officers, to your recollection? Yes. And you've never seen any of those interviews? They weren't video recorded. Had you seen any written statements from them or report from law enforcement? I received a summary of what they stated verbally from the, from another detective, yes. So it'd be fair to say you, you did have knowledge of what they said transpired on November 21st of 2021. I had knowledge of what they said. I didn't see anything. And to the, be and to the best of your recollect recollection, seeing what those two parties had said, what do you recall? Objections. Grounds. Evidence. See what they said and also most of your say. Sustain. What did you read? Objection. From, from those statements given by those two parties. Objection. Calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustain. Grounds for the sustain. Calls for hearsay. One second. Do you recall what officer took those statements from Nicholas Kirby and Corey Runkle in relation to the incident on November 21st of 2021? Yes. And what law enforcement officer was that? Detective Van Ellis. And after that report that you wrote on November 22nd of 2021, was that the end of your investigation into the incident of November 21st of 2021? No. And what was the extent of your investigation after November 2nd, uh, 22nd of 2021? Judge, I'm going to object. Well, on the defendant's behalf, I believe, here, based on previous rulings the court has made. Sustained. And did you speak with Ms. Patterson again after following your report? Yes. In reference to the incident from November 21st, 2021? I don't understand your question. Did you speak with Ms. Patterson after you filed your report in relation to the incident from November 21st of 2021? No. In relation to the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021, do you know if that alleged incident ever took place? Objection. Grounds. Calls for hearsay, lack of personal knowledge. Well, he reported it. It also goes to one of the ultimate issues that the jury will need to determine, so it's sustained. No questions. No further questions right now at this time. Any cross? No, Your Honor. They have something later for that particular witness. All right, I'll try to <coughs> raise that on an appropriate break. Call your next witness, please. Is there only, is there only one witness left? Yes, for, for that. Yes, for that time. Yes, I believe. No one else is here? No, it's not 1030 yet. Who's supposed to come in 1030, Your Honor? Call your next witness, please. I don't have that list right at my fingertips. You said what happened? I, I don't have that list right at my fingertips, but I, I know there's a witness available, so please call your next witness. Can I be provided that 1030 lease? Does the state have that? You can pass it over. I don't have that at my fingertips. Sure. Let me jot it. I have it, but I'll write it up for Mr. Brooks to review, Your Honor. I said for value and return for value this paperwork. Thank you for everyone. Have a seat then. Please call your next witness. And who determined this order? Mr. Brooks, I'll take up that issue outside the presence of the jury later. There is a witness available. Please call the witness. That's not the witness that was intended to be called at this time. I understand that, sir. Under 906.11, I have the authority and the discretion on that, so please call the witness who's available. So I'm being rushed to
Mr. Jim. No, sir. I'm trying to have an effective and efficient use of all of our time. So please call which, the which, witness. Which is respected, but at the same time, being this, that this is my time right, to I'm present gonna my defense. I'm going to excuse the jury for right now. I'll rise for the jury, please. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I do have the authority and just my inherent authority over this case to require you to call the next available witness. You, in my opinion, were not entirely cooperative yesterday with the process, and so I told you that three witnesses would come in at 8.30, two would come in at 10.30, two would come in at 1.30, two would come in at 3.30, and then if there were any left, I wasn't sure if there were or not, would come in at 4. You also didn't provide me with that with that list. Uh, you were advised on the record, but sir. You didn't, you didn't you didn't provide it to me, sir. You chose not to write down, so that's on you, not me. No, nah, that's so. No, you here's can't. the that's thing. Erica judgment. Patterson is here, so I'm advising you that she will be the next witness that you call if you so choose. If you choose not to call her right now, then I'm releasing her from the subpoena. There's no reason for you not to call her. She's on your list. She was on the, the, the listing, as I understand it, the groupings of three, Tuesday that morning, you understand Tuesday it. afternoon, you Wednesday morning, it? Wednesday afternoon, and so on and so forth. That's the order. I told you very specifically I'm not going to have everyone come in at one time. I'm advising you that if you don't call her right now, you will forfeit your right to call her. Is that lawful law? She's here. She's ready to I'm, go. I'm just She's asking your witness. I'm just asking the question. Is that lawful law? I have the authority to continue control the order and mode of interrogation Your Honor, of witnesses. Why is it always so hard to just say yes or no? Yes, is it lawful I have law? the authority, sir. I'm not disputing that. You just I'm not disputing that. No, I said, I asked the question, is it lawful law? I've told you what I believe my authority is. Okay, you, you told don't me want to you, recognize it, that's you fine. Me you want to object and note it, that's you fine. Your, your authority I'm not, I'm not debating your authority. I'm not... I will address one other issue with you because you said you had an issue regarding the last witness. We can address that quickly, and then I'm going to have the jury brought in. That will be your opportunity to that's, call that's a misdirect. Ms. Patterson. That's a misdirect. What issue did I say I had with the you last? You said you wanted to raise said, an issue with detect about Detective Guzman's testimony. What I Guzman's said was testimony. I might have more, cre more questions for that witness. I didn't say it was an issue. Oh, I didn't hear that, sir. You, you had your opportunity <laughs> to ask the witness questions. He's been released. If I mumble something under my breath somehow, that's audible but when I talk clearly somehow doesn't I heard what I interpreted was when you said I may have an an issue with this witness I, I didn't understand I guess I didn't take that as you were going to reserve your right to recall him are you telling me you'd like to reserve your right to recall detective Guth yes all right then that will be noted and we'll keep him under the subpoena I'll have the jury brought back in and you should be prepared if you choose to call Ms. Patterson. This is your opportunity to do it. At the same time, though, that's still a rush to judgment, Your Honor. You can't. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be forced to call people in the order that I'm being told to when these are my witnesses. My you, would, you did not want to provide us with the order, and I respected but that, Mr. Brooks. I, but I said that. And from the so beginning. then I then I asked Your Honor, you to put with respect, blocks. with all respect, did I did I not inform Your Honor and the court that I would not give a specific order? I, I stated that numerous times. And Mr. Brooks, numerous I times. have authority to tell you otherwise. You I may did, not like it. You may disagree with it's, it. It's not, it's not about that. Been, it's about the rest of the judgment. You have not been cooperating with this process. The there, state there's nothing has to cooperate with. agreed to assist you given your custodial status. Okay, and that's and that, and, I never and asked frankly, them to do any that. Any attorney in this situation I never asked them to do that, Your Honor. would give us the order. Did I or did I not? Did I ask them to do that? I did not ask them to do that. They no, volunteered. They, they, they offered. So at the end but, of the day, but we expect if your they didn't want to do it, yeah, but that that wasn't one of the stipulations when they offered to do it, Your Honor. Let's let's be. Let's no, common courtesy is the stipulation. Okay, sir. but it and, wasn't and stipulated too, so I, I didn't have. You are well advised of how this process was going to go. No, I was not. It is because normal if you, in, a, in a trial, you can't to put the people. You can't put the people in a specific spot for me, Your Honor. Come on now. That, it is. That's a rush to judgment. There's no rush to judgment. Here. Are you did the state did yes, the state sir, have to put their the witnesses case. your honor did the state have to put their witnesses in order and tell me it's irrelevant what the state did, did, did they have to do that they didn't need your assistance to do that did they have to do it no they did not I don't have, have to, to be do provided it. with 
we're going to call this witness at this time, but they're this able witness at this to time. Contact their they didn't have to do that, so why should I have to do that? And accommodate their schedules. This is not about you. It's not about the state. It's about the witnesses. It's about what's fair. It's about what's fair. No, frankly, sir, it's about you trying to control what's happening in this court. How? How? How am I controlling what's happening? I'm the one shackled to the table with, so a, uh, here's the with a shock device on my uh, ankles. So how is I'm trying to control anything? I'm I just want this I'm to be fair, to and it hasn't been fair. Mr. Brooks, it's fair. No, it's not. If you, I have to do something that they don't have to do, how's that fair? It's fair. Explain to me how that's the fair. The process that it has been set up to, frankly, help you. No, it's, it's not helping me by it's helping court. it's helping the state and, no, by being able to say if we know the time and we know the person not, and we I know this, you, then we can be prepared. So we'll already be ready. Mr. Brooks, that was I the whole aim of that. And I would have had her come in later. You didn't want to answer that question. There was no question. I, to, it was no question to answer. Uh, I did. I did what you asked me to do, Your Honor. You no, said you didn't. yes. You did. You okay. did. You asked me to give them my witness Mr. list. Mr. Brooks, yesterday, I gave them my witness list. Yesterday, it's not. It's not my fault. Very it's not my fault. They weren't going to be prepared Mr. to do Brooks, their. Here's the deal. To do the their jury's cross. coming out, and I'm. I'm going to stand my ground on this. I'm going to stand my ground, too, but I'm not going to be disrespectful or disrespectful disruptive. If you I'm just stating I want it to be fair. When the jury comes back out, I'm releasing her from the subpoena. You can't do that. Law, where's lack the of lawful law? Where's the lawful law? I have the right to you witnesses. You have to cooperate with this process, But I sir. also have the the Sixth Amendment well, right. We have a witness available for you to call. I can require it's you to It's not the witness that right should have been called at this time, Your Honor. It is based on the list that you provided. and, and That didn't have order. a time. That didn't have a time or of. I'm not going to play order. this game with you, sir. It's not no game. That's was, what you don't seem to understand. To I believe that fully. I don't care what you believe fully. All right. It's not a game. We. I don't take I this as a game. To, that's what. That's what nobody. That's what nobody. Again. You don't got to explain nothing to me. Do you want? That's what you don't understand. You think you that this is a whole game to, to me? Question? This is not a game to me, Your Honor. Not, nothing about this is a joke. I never That's what y'all don't understand. Joke. But there's and it's unfair. It's unfair on. and it's disrespectful to me that you think I would come in here purposely and treat this like a joke or a game. I never said it was a what joke. Type, what, type, what, type of, what type of statement is that? Mr. Your Mr. life is not on the line. Mine is. And you think that I, I think this is funny? I don't think it's funny whatsoever. So I, so I think, Your Honor, with all due respect, I think you so should show some respect. So we're going to take a five-minute break. And when we come back, the jury's coming out. And you need to call your next witness. Thank you. We are in recess. No, nah, you, you're not rushing me to judgment. I don't care what you're talking about. Appearances are as they were before. I would just note Attorney Opper's not at the table, but I presume she'll be back shortly. I will be advising the clerk to have the jurors brought out. And then I'll ask you, sir, to call the defense next witness. Can we address subject matter jurisdiction that still has to be proven for the record? I decline to do so. Is so the, the audio on? The audio on. Yes, it's on, sir. It's on. So we're not going to address subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven for the record? For the record, I have addressed it. No, you have, have and proven it for the written, record. And your objections noted for the have record. proven subject matter jurisdiction for the record? Have you proven it? Has the prosecution proven? So that's a judicial determination that you don't have to answer that, Your Honor, being a public servant? I was talking to my clerk. I didn't hear what you asked. The jury's coming in. You heard what I asked. I actually did not. Come on. Come on, Your Honor. Come on now. Come on now. We, we, we got to cut that out. You know you have to prove subject matter jurisdiction. You know that. You have to honor your oath of office. You know that. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The defense may call its next witness. Be here one second. I'm trying to make sure I got the, the paperwork since I'm being rushed to judgment. All right. Go ahead. Defense calls Erica Patterson since I'm being rushed to judgment. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record. Erica Patterson, go ahead, your witness. Are the ones spelling the name? I believe it's on the record from previously, but go ahead. You can spell your first and last names, please. E R I K A P A T T E R S O N. Just one second, Your Honor. I'm trying to find some relevant paperwork here. One second. I'm sorry about that. One second. I'm trying to find this. Paperwork. Just had it on the table. I'm just gonna start the questioning. I'm not seeming to find paperwork that I just had on the table for some reason, odd reason. Good morning, 
Miss Patterson. Good morning. So what do you do for a living? I have my CNA certificate. I'm going to direct your attention to the <coughs> evening of November 21st, 2021. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? I was hanging out with my friend Corey at Frame Park. I had spoken to you, Mr. Delbro. You came out there at Frame Park and met me after Corey, Miss Corey, separated from me with her friend. Me and you got into an argument. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pursuing to the question? I am. Answer your question. I was referring to the judge. I was hanging out I with I think Ms. that kind of got a little ahead of. Mr. Brooks, just. Uh, I'll let you interrupt the answer and you can ask a follow up. So go ahead, ask your question. Same question? Sure. What were you doing the evening of November 21st, 2021, before linking up with the alleged defendant? Hanging with my roommate at the time at Frame Park. And what were you and your roommate doing? Oh, okay. We covered this ground during her testimony previously. Objection and grounds for, I object to that and grounds for the objection on behalf of the state. Mr. Burks, we did cover many of these topics previously, so if there's new topics, please go to those. I'll give you a little bit of leeway to lay some foundation, but go ahead, ask your question. That's, that's what the objection the... is from the state is overruled. Do you remember the question? You asked me what we were doing at the, at the park with Corey? Is that your question? Yes. We were drinking. I was drinking Mike's hard beverage. Do you recall around what time of the evening it was when you and your roommate arrived at the park? I do not remember. Do you recall having uh, any phone interactions during that time when you and your roommate were at the park? Phone interactions, yes. Do you recall who they were with? You. What do you mean by you? Daryl Brooks. Is that usually the name you refer to the alleged defendant by? No. Would it be fair to say that during those phone interactions, there was a talk of you guys meeting up? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall, to the best of your recollection, what time that would have been at? No, I don't remember. I'm sorry. You Are you making references to the, the phone conversations being throughout the day? Yes. And so at some point, would it be fair to say that you did meet up with the alleged defendant? Yes. Do you recall what time that was? I just told you no. Do you recall if you were still at the park during that time or had you moved locations? Still at the park. And was your roommate still present with you at that time? No, she left. She went her other way with her friend. Do you recall who that friend was? Nick. I'm assuming, or let me back that up. Would it be fair to say that at some point during the meetup with the alleged defendant, things got a little chaotic? Would that be fair to say? Yes. And do you recall if... At that point, you were still at the park? When we met up? Yes. Well, we were at the park for a second, then we drove around. Where did you drive to? Around, then me and, him, me and you, Mr. Brooks, were arguing in the car. We went up this, this is a street, it's like a hill, we went up there, and then me and you got into an altercation, I got out of the car, walked back towards Frame Park. Oh, wait, again. Hold on, she's answering okay. your question. Um, you asked her where you drove around. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. And then I was walking down the street, and I left your car. And that's when you followed me, and I walked back towards Frame Park. Made reference to walk back to Frame Park. I don't know the exact street name. It was the walk back down the hill. I don't know the exact street name. Did you at any time during your travels back to Frame Park, did you at any time notice that there was something going on in the, the area? No. When I got to Frame, I was too worried about walking back to Frame Park. When I got to Frame Park after I left it, that's when I realized there was something going on. And did you ever arrive back at Frame Park? Yes. And what did you do when you arrived back at Frame Park? I called my friend Corey and told her that me and Mr. Brooks got into an altercation. Mr. Brooks was following me. I went back to the SUV, the car, and you argued with me somewhere. I walked back across the street, and by that time, Miss Corey had walked towards us to meet up, meet up with me. You made reference to you calling your friends. Mm -hmm. did, do you recall? Well, let me back up a little bit. Did you call your friend Corey or the friend that she had left you to hang out with? Corey's phone, I kept calling her phone. Her phone kept going to voicemail, and I called Nick's phone. He put Corey on the phone. I said, Daryl Brooks had just hit me. I want to back up a little bit, if I may, to the day prior, November 20th of 2021. Do you recall what you were doing that day? Well, I was, where I was staying at the shelter at first, I was arguing still with Mr. Brooks all throughout the day. Me and Corey had left, and Corey and I stepped away, and I went back to Frame Park. I went to Frame Park, that's where I met you at. I mean, you also got into an argument that day, but we didn't drive around. We're at the Frame Park. So you're saying that you and the alleged defendant were together the day of November 20th, 2021? Yes. 
Do you recall around what time that was? I do not remember. And you stated you were briefly with your friend Corey that day? Yeah, but she went a whole different direction. She didn't come to Frame Park with me. She turned on a whole different street right before Frame Park. Do you recall at any time on November 21st of 2021 being interviewed by a Detective Guth? Yep. And do you recall giving a recorded a recorded a report at that time? I don't remember. Do you recall if you had given Detective Goof all the details of the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021? I didn't give him all the details, but I did the next day when I seen him. Hmm. Funny. Were you aware that it was reported there was, in fact, no incident on November 20th, 2021? That's not true. Objection. We'll just write the answer and the question. Grounds. Lack of personal knowledge. Hearsay. Sustained. Can I show the witness the same paperwork that I attempted to show? No. And why not? Not relevant. How is it not relevant when that was just testified to? Wouldn't that be opening the door? No. Next question. Any reason why it would be reported no incident happened on November 20th of 2021? Same objection. Grounds? Some facts not in evidence. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? The record speaks for itself. So upon speaking to Detective Goof during the first interview, do you recall why you were not forthright with information? It wasn't that I was not forthright. I just didn't tell him everything right away. Why not? I don't know, Mr. Brooks. When speaking with a law enforcement officer, would it be fair to say that you should be truthful and honest? I was very truthful. I just didn't tell him everything I want until the next day, Mr. Brooks. And in the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021, were you injured? No. Well, you did hit me a little. Well, like a little. Were you injured? No, I didn't have any marks on me. Is that what you're asking? So where were you injured? By my lip. Objection. It states the evidence. Grounds. I believe the witness understood the question. She answered it. It may stand. Did your roommate observe any injuries from the alleged incident on, on November 20th, 2021? She knew about it, but there, there was nothing visible on my face. Do you know if your roommate, do you know if your roommate had spoken with law enforcement about these alleged incidents I from November 20th of 2021 and November 21st of 2021? I don't know. Did she ever tell you yourself that she was interviewed by any law enforcement? I don't remember. So what time did you meet up with the alleged defendant on November 20th, 2021? I don't remember. Was it morning time? Afternoon. Time? I didn't hear that. Afternoon. Hmm. And what were you doing prior to the alleged meeting up with the alleged defendant? Objection. Grounds? Asked and answered. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Asked and answered. When? Next question, please. When was it answered? So to the best of your recollection, you you can't recall why an alleged incident on November 20th of 2021 was reported to never happen. Objection. Grounds. Same reasons as the previous objections. Since facts not in evidence, this characterizes her prior testimony and irrelevant. I object to that respectfully and ask for a legal finding of fact and a legal reconsideration of that ruling, Your Honor. Denied. Noted for the record. Next question, please. I'm trying to figure out how something got pulled out of thin air. Interesting. So it would be fair to say that you have a child in common with the alleged defendant. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Yeah, is that the only child in common? Yes. Do you have any other children? Objection. Grounds. It has nothing to do with the case. Hold on. There's been an objection. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? The record speaks for itself. Next question. I, well, what was the record speaking for itself? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Not relevant. How is it not relevant? Next question, please. How is it not relevant? The child that you have in, in, in common with the alleged defendant, how old is that child? 15. Do you keep regular contact with that child? Off and on. Describe what you mean by off and on. I'll object. Grounds. This is not relevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds. It's not relevant, sir. She answered it. Next question, please. And the child in common that you have with the alleged defendant, does that child live with you? No. Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. You don't have to answer that. Do any of your children live with you? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. Hmm. Grounds for the sustain? Not relevant. That goes to the credibility, Your Honor, so how is it not relevant? The objection has been sustained. For relevancy. I object to that and would like to inform you that I intend to appeal that decision unless you want to give a legal reconsideration that, of that ruling. Noted for the record. Next question. Is that lawful law? Next question, please, sir. I'm, I'm getting here. This is lawful law. Wisconsin State Statute 906.16. That doesn't answer my question, but okay. Where did you meet the alleged defendant? Reno, Nevada. How long have you known the alleged defendant? 16 years. You made reference to meeting in Nevada. Do you recall where you met at in Nevada? 
No. In relation to the alleged incident on, on November 21st of 2021, would it be fair to say that there's been no contact between you and the alleged defendant? Not since then, no. That, that last answer was kind of low. Did you say no? I said no, not since then. So that, that would mean, assuming, that would mean no contact at all via phone or anything like that? No. So my question would be, I don't know if you could see them from here, but do you recognize these pictures? Um, you need to show those to the state. The bail will take them. That's not proper procedure, sir. I'm going to object to those being shown to the witness. They have no relevance whatsoever. Yes, they do. And I'm getting to how they have relevance. They've Sus also never been disclosed to the state before this moment. Sustained. Sustained why? Not relevant. They're, they are relevant. It creates foundation, and I can prove that. I'll take up the issue outside the presence of the jury. Next question, please. And these need to be offered into evidence as well. You stated to, that there's been no contact. How would the alleged defendant be? How would the alleged defendant obtain photographs from you if there's been no contact? Objection. Grounds. Sus fact, not in Grounds. Sustained. Sus facts, not in evidence. Not relevant. How's it not relevant? Photos just don't pop up out of the blue. Mr. Brooks assumes facts not in evidence. No, it's and any and it's at facts. this point, the conduct pictures right here. after facts. the alleged date of violation here is not relevant. The alleged violation. You're for the correct. Record. After the date charged, that the dates that are charged for these allegations, yes. you are absolutely correct. Thank you. Have you since the evening of November twenty first of twenty twenty one? Have you attempted to contact the alleged defendant? Objection. Mm -hmm. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. I'm going to excuse the jury. Thank you. Be seated. Funny. Your Honor, I'll find oh, it. Hold on. All right, sir, I'm going to let you make an offer yeah. of proof as to why you believe the photographs and the questioning about contact after the alleged incident is relevant. It's relevant because these were sent by the witness. It assumes the fact not in evidence, but you what is the letter hold to? On. Tell me the basis you believe there's been communication and why you believe it's relevant to it's, her testimony. It's relevant because it was testified to her first time testifying and then also by was the last guy, Goof, that he was told that the witness was supposed to be so deeply afraid of me and all this type of stuff. So if you're so deeply afraid and worried about somebody and this and that, why would you sneak and have contact? Do you want to open up the door to the other act's evidence of you? That's not opening. No, 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 no. That's not Hear opening the door. Hear me out. Oh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. You keep questioning her about whether she's afraid or not or I why she wouldn't have contact or not. I didn't you question her about that. You are opening the door to that testimony. How? All of how my do, rulings have been does, made to prevent what could be seen as prejudicial in, uh, evidence. The standard's not prejudicial. The standard's whether it's unfairly prejudicial. It's unfairly but you can open the door Ronnie, to that, sir. It's unfairly president, uh, uh, prejudicial that I have a, a, a document stating that November 20th never even happened, but yet and still the witness then can get on the stand and lie on the stand. Have you turned that over to the state? Come on, man. Y'all know that's not right. Y'all know that's not right. Then you need to immediately turn it over to the state right now. It may become relevant, but no one has seen it. When so, did you receive the so document? That, so what, so hold on. When did you, when, gonna, I'm having you make an offer, but when did you receive the okay, document? Okay, but that, I just want to stay for the record, Your Honor, that that's, that's kind of biased because the, the state did the same thing yesterday with creating a ex exhibit right on the fly that didn't even exist that I didn't have. But that's then, not true. That's a misstatement no, that, of the that, of that, the that is evidence. true. No. She said it herself. No. Marking an exhibit is not creating an no, exhibit. No, not marking an exhibit. She said We're not going to go down a tangent. Tangent, sir. Right. I'm going to focus gonna on this you, and I'm going to give you the fair. opportunity to fair. make a record. It's not right? fair. It's not fair. When right. did you receive <laughs> this document that you claim was sent by this witness? It is not claimed. It's for a fact. It hasn't been established yet. I need to make a record. So do y'all want, want, want the letter? I want to see the letter. I want to see the letter. Okay, so I got to. And I want to so know when you received it. I got to bring that in. Every time, this is what I don't get. Every time I'm presenting something that needs to be made for the record and placed in the evidence, it's a problem. But the state can do it no it's, problem it's not sir there are proper procedures and okay. i want well, you to that make was the a proper record procedure. if i don't if you don't make a record so then what I can't it, make a ruling. it threw people off the loop they weren't ready for it they scared of it that's what it is come on man <sighs> mr brooks come on man stop when you you stop are it. you are stop even it you're a public servant your honor I, I respect your courtroom i you respect do. you you're a public servant though your 
job is to be the referee. Is it or is it not? You stated so yourself on record that your job is being the umpire. Your Honor, can I ask Ms. Tyson, please be excused? Yes, you can be excused. My apologies. My apologies too, but it needs to be some truth, especially when we're talking about stuff that didn't even happen, but they're allowed to get on the stand and say that it happened when they know it didn't happen. So let me make, I'm going to make a record about what this he's is referring ridiculous, to man. in count 77. Okay, Where, state, and what happened to that paper? Because it was on the table. Then when Mr. I come Brooks, back in, I need to make a record of a variety of so things. So took my paper? And, and you keep interrupting me. You attempt to divert everyone from what is being done this very second. I didn't attempt to do anything. Yes, you do it repeatedly, okay, sir. Whatever. So you're doing it once again. Whatever. Just make your record. The document that Mr. Brooks wanted to show Detective Guth and this witness was a letter sent from the state of Wisconsin to the court regarding count 77. The state sought to dismiss that count and I granted the request that the charge be dismissed. Why was the charge dismissed? They don't need a reason. They chose not to pursue that. Your Honor, maybe to simplify respect. things and to keep this tidy. I don't know. Attorney Upper, would you like to provide a basis for why the state sought dismissal of that charge? Because as Ms. Patterson just testified a short while ago, she did not have any visible marks or injuries from that event. And we did have the photographs of her injuries. We did not want to confuse the record as to whether or not there was a battery that occurred on November 20th. Your Honor, I object to that. What does, what does the letter read? You have the letter. You showed it to I, me. Yeah, and I'm, I've been trying to find it ever since I came back in. And now all of a sudden, I can't. And now it. you're impugning, though, like somehow you're impugning the integrity of this court, no, of I'm the bailiffs of the state. You're accusing, frankly, everyone did of I moving your finger, papers. Did I point the finger at anyone? Did I say anyone did anything? Not directly, but indirectly you did, So sir. how can you make you the assumption made, that I'm saying? Can I please make the record without yes, you interrupting Yes, you may. Yes, you may. I apologize. I appreciate that. But you made repeated comments about, I can't find my documents. I don't know what happened. Things of that nature. When you came back out, you took multiple minutes before you even asked your first question of Miss Patterson. No one touched your table. Your Honor, did I say anyone touched my table? I didn't. You I didn't implied say you, it, sir. But did I say that? You, I mean, I never you stated said, it implicitly. I never asked the bailiffs, hey, did any one of you touch my table? I never said that to them. I just said, I can't find my paper, which is the truth. I'm, and the I'm way that down. you said it, like, hmm. I didn't point anyone without, out, with, though. And, like, well, that's, that's kind that's of fair. interesting. I don't, I don't have a document that was just on my table. That is what you said. That's what I that said, effect. but I did not point the finger at anyone. So, I you have the letter. In, Your Honor, with You've all been respect, given? I can see if I came in and said, hey, one of you moved something off my table, or if I would have directed that towards the state, or if I would have directed that towards the clerks or something like that, then it would be, that would be more of a validity to what you're saying. I need to continue with the records. Many times throughout this trial, and especially the last two days, when the court makes a ruling that you disagree with, or I want to make a record about some behavior of yours, or a, a further record about a ruling that you, that was not in your favor, that you start peppering me with questions or comments, statements. You question me about the law. You ask, is it verified law? It is, from my perspective, a clear attempt to, to kind of turn us in a direction away from what we're doing, perhaps even to stall and to delay. I'm sorry That's my that That I'm making a rule. You're doing it again. I mean, because it has no validity. I am trying to make a record outside the presence of the jury about a line of questioning you want to ask Ms. Patterson. Now, I've reviewed repeatedly up on the bench 90608 and 90616, which are two of the primary ways you can attack credibility. It's limited to character for truthfulness or untruthfulness. It's not specific instances of conduct. It's character evidence, which frankly wouldn't even come from the witness who's testifying. All right. Then there's the statute on bias, 90616. None of the questions, as I heard them, went to a permissible topic under bias of witnesses. You generally said credibility. You did not give me any further explanation as to why you believed it was relevant to credibility. Now we have you uh, claiming that there's some document that was sent by the witness after the charges were filed uh, that apparently contained photographs.
photographs, I think, I, and you can clarify the record momentarily when I'm done, um, that you believe goes to the credibility of this witness. So I need to ask a few questions about that, sir, to determine whether it has relevance to those issues. When did you receive this letter? I received this multiple letters, actually, over a period of time. It, it wasn't, I referred to this one because this one had the pictures, but. And why do you believe one, it was from Ms. Patterson? Your question, to answer your question with clarity. Thank you. Does it have a date on it, the letter? No, I didn't bring the letter. I brought the pictures because I thought from my interpretation, I thought showing the pictures would be okay. How did it, how did I get this? So my mind was saying, show the pictures. They didn't, they didn't come out of thin air. The witness we knows the that they sent me the pictures. They know that. Well, again, it assumes facts that aren't here. You're assuming this witness sent, sent it. I don't know. But even if she did, what relevance does it have to her credibility before this jury? It goes to the credibility because she's put on this facade of being so <laughs> afraid of someone, but yet still, you know that we're not supposed to have contact, but you still sneaking behind and saying, oh, I wonder how you're doing. And, oh, this and this and that. Oh, I don't think no, she's ever said she was oh, afraid. Ooh, I think that was the officers who may have stated that, but I don't believe she but, ever said that. She specifically said today when you asked her, why did you, it was either, why did you go back or why did you have, I'll look at my notes. And she it was said, why, I don't know. It was why weren't you forthright with all the details? That was the question. So again, I'm going to ask you, even if this letter's from her, these pictures are from her, how does it relate to her credibility before the jury? Who else could the be, who else could these pictures be from? I'm going to ask you point blank. Did you get a letter that's signed from her? I got, what do you mean signed? No how do you know? Letters. What's your, why do you have a belief that they are from her? I have multiple letters from her. You're not answering my question. Why do you believe the letters are from Erica Patterson? Because they were sent from Erica Patterson. Why else would I? Were they signed by her? What do you mean signed? Did she write her name on the letter? Was are, it the content of the letter? Me? No, I'm not kidding you. I need to make a record, sir. You're making a statement that these letters are from her and that they're relevant to her credibility. Your Honor, I'm going to go out on the, on the limb and, here. And I'm asking you why you have hold that opinion. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here and assume, which I know is true, you've never been in my position. You've never been in jail. So you've never received a letter from someone writing someone in jail. No one is going to sign. When you You're say to me, You're not answering my when question, you say to sir. Me, What's did, the basis why you believe they're from Miss Patterson? Is there some information in them that you that only she would know? Did she sign the letters? Is it a, is it penmanship that you recognize? Why do you believe they're from her as opposed to somebody else sending you information? Could be your mom, why, could be, I'm just saying, could be anybody somebody, else. This is, you gotta answer my question. It's called an honor, offer of proof. Is, but you still gotta understand why this this is this is mind boggling to me. Like how, I got a child with this woman. How would I, why would I not know her handwriting? But you have to why would a I foundation for these letters, sir. That might be this through your ridiculous. own testimony. So that I'm trying to figure out why you believe they're from her. Not all this other stuff about Are you I'm in Serious. Jail and I have a child. I'm trying to act. I, I need to know. It's called an offer of proof. Are you serious? What do you believe? Why do you believe they're from her? I am serious. I because they're from her. But you're assuming. Like how, how else am I supposed to answer that? I've given you a few reasons why it would lend to that. Opinion. So it has to be it has to be put in a legal the term. The bottom line is I need the letter. So if you're going to question her on that, the state absolutely has a right to see the letter. So you, you need to provide that letter. I'm not. The bottom line is I'm not going to allow any questioning without having that letter. So the state has the ability to question you about that or question this witness and to look at the veracity of what your claims are here. I may take an early lunch. If that's in your cell, then you can go get it and bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Do you have the letter with so, you in court? I just said no. How okay. many times I got to say the same thing on, on, on record? You know, sometimes, sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. But if I, but if I say something under my breath, everybody seems to hear it. Everybody seems to hear in that just fine. In a quiet courtroom, yes, we assumes, can hear it very clearly. everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging. Or, Once again, you're doing this tactic. Because you try to it, it's not a tactic, it's facts. what we're talking it's about facts. to some other reason. It's facts. Because I, I find thing. it hard to believe that um, I'm gonna all let of the a state, sudden nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the oh, state man, make stop. a record of why they stop. believe it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. I've given you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe I, it's... I didn't get these pictures from... They, nobody else... Why was somebody The record will else, reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from. No, that you believe. That I know. All right. I'll ask the state their position on all of this. My position, Your Honor, is that these pictures, first of all, should not be admissible. One, because of a discovery violation. We've never seen them before. Two, because we have reason to believe that he did not get them from Erica Patterson.
Patterson. He is on a jail phone call talking to his mother, Dawn Woods, about Dawn Woods sending these photographs to him. Now, that's a lie. I object Let to that. Let the state make their argument without interruption, sir. That's a lie, though. Three, I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're going to go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has. He impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada. And for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's Furthermore, I'm not Because done. that's a lie. Let him finish. Because at the end of the day, Let if, him we, finish, if we don't open the door on that, no, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate all on the record since you think you know so much. Once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on, we can open the door on how old she told me she was when we met. We can ask He's, that question he too then. He's over the top animated that? right now. Do you know that? that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, no, I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour, we'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Don't and he can show it is inadmissible, she will on. not be questioned. <laughs> and under 90611, I will declare the cross-examination closed. You where, you what Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Right? Get your facts straight. So let's let's open the door on all of it then so we can get all of it on the record. Since you think you know so much, did you know she said she was 18 when I met her? Did you know that? Mr. Brooks in the other courtroom so that I could make an adequate record. We are in the stage of this trial where Mr. Brooks has the right to present relevant and probative evidence and to call witnesses. And I have done my very best to honor his rights in that regard. The record has been made abundantly clear that Mr. Brooks does not believe this court has jurisdiction. Once that objection is made, it's preserved. There's a standing objection. I will note that for the record. Mr. Brooks continues, in my opinion, to bring this issue up in front of the jury to distract, to delay, and to call into question the integrity of these proceedings. Frankly, maybe to create an issue on appeal if he is convinced. It is evident to this court that when there is a ruling that Mr. Brooks disagrees with, uh, whether it be an evidentiary ruling, whether it be on subject matter jurisdiction, whatever it may be, that he has a pattern now of directly confronting the court, asking for, is that verified law? Can you prove that? Is that an actual law? He starts debating the topic once again, or he will even try to further turn us away from that by bringing up another topic. The issue, as it relates to this witness, is a single charge in the case. It is a battery charge with a date of violation that is alleged to be November 21 of 2021. To allow Mr. Brooks to ask the witness about contact after that point in time is not relevant. He has not given me any reason as to why it's relevant. If those questions were to be answered by Erica Patterson, Mr. Brooks would open the door to what only could be described as very damaging evidence against him. I will give Mr. Brooks a final opportunity to make an offer of proof as to why he believes my decision is wrong. That needs to include an offer of proof as to why he believes this letter is from Erica Patterson and why it's relevant to the issues in this case. I am going to take a very short recess to have Mr. Brooks brought back into this courtroom so that we can continue with testimony and evidence. All right, so we are back on the record. I've been advised that Mr. Brooks does not want to come over to the main courtroom. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you, you are invited back to this courtroom. Um, it is my sincere hope that you want to come back here. We are at the point in this trial where you have a witness still on the stand, obviously figuratively at the moment, not literally. I'm going to ask you if you are ready to answer my questions from previously and also to let me know whether you are asking to stay in that courtroom. You are invited back here. Would you like to come back here? Yes or no? The, the audio is on. Would you like to come back to this courtroom, sir? Uh, you're muted. 
So, so I'm finally going to mute it. You've been unmuted for a while since I came back on. My understanding, sir, is you'd like to be in that other courtroom. Is that true? Record to reflect. He's putting on the headphones. What's going on? Mr. Brooks, I'm inviting you yeah. back to the courtroom. My understanding from a relay of information from the bailiffs is that you don't want to come back here. I ain't saying nothing. All right. Are you ready to come back then? Not if I'm just going to get held in contempt again. I didn't hold you in contempt. Then why am I even over here? So that I could make a ruling and make a record without an interruption. So did you make your did you make your record? I did. Am I ever going to get a chance to make the record without being interrupted? Do you want to come back into this courtroom? Not if you're going to hold me in contempt. I need I to continue to with the trial. So if you don't answer yes or no, then I then I will presume you want to be in that courtroom and you'll by your conduct waive your right to be in this courtroom. I, by what conduct? I didn't I didn't consent by to be By failing in to answer my questions. So I'll ask you again. Are you going to hold me in contempt? I don't want to be held in contempt. I will ask you again, sir. Would you like to come back to this courtroom? It's, I'm supposed to be in there anyway. Twice now I've an asked him. He has not answered a yes or no. I'll ask you a third time. Would you like to come back into this courtroom? Yes, if you're not going to hold yes, me in contempt. Given his yes, I will close the courtroom. He'll be brought over, and then we'll continue when he comes into this courtroom. And for the record, I do not consent record, to being called that name. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always muted. I don't know why she think I can hear everything she's saying perfectly clear without the head. Oh, that's a trick to help hold everything up too, right? I'm going to hold me in contempt, man. I might as well stay over here. All right, let's take up the issue of the letter and the photographs and your offer of proof, sir, if you have one. Okay. I don't need no offer of proof. I'll ask you a second time. Do you have an offer of proof we, we to provide, sir? That. We can go past all that. I don't, I don't need to ask them questions. It's too much of an issue. It's too much of a problem. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to ask you for a third time. Do you have an offer of proof related to no. the I just said no. I just said no. I just said that. Based upon there being no offer of proof, then my decision stands. As to the continuation of the examination of Ms. Patterson, I would like an offer of proof as to what you believe her probative and relevant testimony will be from this point forward. I mean, I don't know how she's going to answer the rest of the questions. There's not that many questions left. I was almost done. What topics generally were you going to question her about? I guess I'll have to look in here because so much that happened since over the past hour and a half or so. I can tell you one thing. I, I don't intend to have too many more questions. I'll tell you that. I was almost finished. I need an offer of proof as to what you believe her testimony would be, meaning what topics? And are they topics that have not already been covered either through her direct examination from the state, your cross-examination, or already covered by your direct? What, what do you mean by related to her direct? Is that from the last time she testified? From the first date that she testified and from today. I don't what remember, new topics will you be? I don't remember be? everything she testified to the first time. It was two weeks ago. This is your opportunity to prevent relevant and probative evidence. She's already been questioned now twice by you. So what new topics do you intend to question her about when she comes back on the witness stand? What do you mean by new topic? Topics that you haven't already covered. What, to pursue it to the police report or something? Is that what you're asking? No, I don't understand. I'm asking you, I'll ask you once again, sir, give me an offer of proof as to what you believe uh, your questioning will be as to Ms. Patterson going forward. And you say it related to topics, right? You can just give me the topics. I think that's fair. I wanted to ask questions about the police reports. That was the, the last few questions. That's why I'm saying it was only... Is it a statement that she wrote? I don't know if it's a statement that she wrote in here. Do you, see a, is. Do you see a written statement with her signature? I don't have to go through all the paperwork. Is there a written statement from Ms. Patterson? No, Your Honor. It's my understanding Detective Guth spoke to her on both occasions. Is that right? Yes, with Detective Barrett with him on the first occasion. Detective Barrett wrote that first. Both interviews were also recorded. Previously provided with discovery? Absolutely. What about the police report, sir? Do you want to question her about so I know with specificity? Oh, I'm looking at it now. How many officers? How many officers did reports? Because it seemed like it's more than just two. At least from this paperwork, is more than two. May I uh, be able to show me what Mr. Brooks is referring to? I can maybe help him try and explain, but sure. I don't know what he's talking about. I can't find a first page to that, but whoever that officer is right here, I just snatch it. Pages two and three out of six from Detective Barron's report. This is one of the two reports regarding the statements that Ms. Patterson gave to detectives on November 21st and then on November 22nd. This is the first statement. Is that the officer you just said? 
Yes. What about that report do you want to question this witness about? Uh, the report is not in order, so again, as I stated before, I would have to read it. Mr. Brooks, I trust that you're prepared. These are your witnesses. So what questions, what about that report do you want to question Ms. Patterson on? Your Honor, I just stated three times I would have to read a little bit of this to form the question. Under my authority, and given that this witness was initially called by the state, there was a full and fair opportunity for cross-examination by Mr. Brooks at that time, and they had ample time this morning to question her. I will uh, declare that the his questioning of her to be closed. I will bring the witness out on the witness stand, when the, and then we'll bring the jury out, and then I will simply ask the state if there are any questions, and then we'll move on from there. Just so I understand what you mean by closed. I'm not allowing you to ask her any additional questions, given your full and fair opportunity that you had previously when she was called by the state and given the opportunity you had this morning and your failure to identify for this court any probative and relevant information that she would testify to about what's in that report. How do I, first of all, the report isn't even in order. So I would have to essentially read at least some of it to even ask Mr. Brooks, question. this is your witness. I expect that you will be prepared and you will not cause delay by any lack thereof. So I'm bringing the witness out. The jury will come out and I'm, you will not have another opportunity to ask any additional questions unless the state asks questions on cross-examination. So what is we bringing the witness out for? I have to I do can? that in front of the jury. Man, I object to that ruling too. Can you, can you give me a, a lawful law why? Your objection is noted for the record. If you start <coughs> interrupting me when the jury comes out or make any comments, Commentary, you will be removed to the other courtroom and you will and that's so I'm being held in contempt again no it's not contempt it's a warning that you will forfeit your right so I might to as be well present. Just, I might as well have just no stayed such over contempt there. finding I might as well have just stayed over there then if, the, if I was going to held in contempt that decision is for you and you alone to make and it is based on your conduct if you're going to continue take me over here. just take me over there because I'm not I'm not going to get held in contempt for nothing I have in you did. You're, you're attempting to hold me in contempt. That's what that is. No, that's not contempt. So is it civil or criminal? Why am I being Mr. held Brooks, in contempt? I'm going to keep that's you in whole, here because that's the whole reason you're going to need to call come. the next witness and I'm going to need Your to Honor, bring you over in any event. That's the whole reason why I didn't want to come over here because you were going to find a reason to hold me in contempt. Well, I'm finding a reason, and it's not contempt, but I'd find a reason to remove you based upon your disruptive outburst. Well, then remove me if that's your... what you want to do. Remove me then. I don't want to do it, sir. I Obviously want you, you in do. courtroom. Obviously you do. You brought it up before, before we could even get to... All right. Mr. Brooks has forfeited his right to be present in this courtroom for the remainder of this witness, even so though it will I, be did short. did I actually forfeit that right? You have forfeited your right to be present. That and how the, did I forfeit that right, Your Honor? We're going off the record so that he can be removed to the other courtroom. So why am I being held in contempt now? I'm what, not what, holding you in contempt. Then what did I do? All right, I'm going to step off. You've interrupted repeatedly. I'm going to step off. Seated, Madam Clerk, would you please have the jury brought out and make sure all the monitors are on? Um, you are unmuted. The jury is on its way in. Why didn't we address subject matter jurisdiction when I was over here? I'm going to mute you if you do that. I'm not going to do it when the jury, I'm, that's why That's why I asked now before the jury came in. All right address that. So will it be proven for the record? Why I at least be told why I'm holding, held in contempt when I didn't do that? Civil or criminal? <laughs> That's a misstatement of what I did. So why am I I will here? advise when the jury's coming in and if you can't be quiet, you're going to be muted. You're going to mute me anyway. Not if you're quiet. So I got to be quiet like a little kid? It's not what I said. You have to be I respectful. You, you have to be respectful of the proceedings. But nobody has to be respectful to me though. That's a mischaracterization as well. So can I, can I say for the record that two of your bailiffs was just making gestures behind my head and I seen them through the TV screen and made me feel uncomfortable? Please rise for the jury. So that's not going to be addressed. So I'm muting you. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Mr. Brooks is appearing from another courtroom. That should not affect your deliberation or verdicts in any way. At this time, does the state have any questions for this witness? I don't have any questions for Ms. Patterson. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you for being here. The defense may call its next witness. Go ahead, sir. You can call your next witness. I thought I was muted. You're not muted. So how long am I supposed to stay here now? I'm going to excuse the jury. Do you want to come back into this courtroom as you call your next witness no. you're unmuted so what's going on now why am i being held in contempt yet again mr brooks was not held in contempt although that is one of the possible ways for a trial judge to handle a defendant who is stubbornly defiant disruptive and contemptuous i found that you forfeited your right to be present based upon your conduct okay, and all those case laws you just cited are, are pursuant to that would you like to come back into this courtroom as you continue with the calling of witnesses and your next witness you you uh 
I thought you was using Illinois versus Allen. You are welcome to come back into this courtroom, sir. So why was I removed in the first place then? I've made my findings. The record will stand. Would you like to come back into this courtroom as you call your next witness? I'm not, you're not going to hold me in contempt no more. Not going to do that. I will ask one more time and he fails to answer it with a yes or no. I will take that as a no that he wants to stay in that you courtroom. Can't, you, can't, so, you can't answer. You can't answer Mr. for Brooks, You can't do that. You can't do that. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising That's you that I will. He's interrupting me once again. Okay, you talking. Courtroom. You the one talking right now, so don't 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 do that. I'm going to don't. mute him because he's not being respectful and he's just spouting off. So he did not answer my question directly. He has not reclaimed his right to come back into the courtroom because number one, he has not requested it. Number two, he hasn't answered my question about whether he wants to come back in. And number three, he hasn't stated or demonstrated a willingness to conduct himself <laughs> consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings. I will give him one more opportunity. Uh, so that it's abundantly clear on this record that I am honoring his right to be present and I will unmute him. Sir, would you like to come back into this courtroom as you call don't, your next witness? Don't don't try to seem like you're trying to honor my rights now because you haven't Okay, he is, um, again, not don't, answering don't, the question don't, directly. Don't try to put on, no, don't. I'm going to mute him again. As I've noted before, this is a clear method now that Mr. Brooks is employing that when I have done something that he disagrees with, that he just continues to argue with me and does not answer questions directly. Directly. So based upon his continued disruptive behavior, the fact that he will not answer my questions directly, I'll find that he is continuing to forfeit his right to be present in this courtroom. Clearly, the audio and visual technology are working. He's been responding, although not appropriately. Um, he is in that other courtroom. We can see him. He does have the headphones on, and I've confirmed that he can see and hear as well based upon the court personnel that are in the other courtroom. So I'll make a, another finding that his appearance from the other courtroom is the functional equivalent of him being present in this courtroom. Mr. Brooks, before I unmute you, I am going to advise you. I will ask you to call your next witness, and if I don't get a direct response out of you, I may ask it again. And if you fail to give me a direct response, then you will forfeit your right to call any other witnesses. So I'm going to unmute you. Actually, I need to bring the jury back out, but before I do that, I will unmute you first and ask you which witness you intend to call so we can at least have that person ready to go and outside Inside the courtroom. Who will be your next witness? I'm not calling no witness if I got to be in this other courtroom. Would you like okay. to come back into this courtroom, sir? Why, why was I ever removed? You never answered. I've I made a record of that, sir. I have to answer everything, though. Everything you ask me, you expect me to answer. But then when I ask you questions, you never have to answer anything. I just I just put on the record that two of your bailiffs just made gestures. When I'm looking at them off the reflection of the screen, they're making gestures behind my head that make me feel uncomfortable. I just brought that up on the record. You didn't even address that. Mr. Brooks, I didn't address it because, frankly, you keep interrupting me and then I have to deal with the interruptions and make a record regarding that. So I just saw the captain walk over. I will let security personnel, Captain Dussault, look into that and if appropriate, he can bring that conduct to my attention. Um, I'd also remind the defendant that at any time, you can also ask to be brought over through the bailiffs who are in that courtroom. So to be abundantly fair to you, I will ask one more time, would you like to come back over to this courtroom? I should have never been removed. That's not answering my question, sir. You, you haven't answered my question. Um, the court's not going to answer questions directed at the court by the defendant because they're not relevant or probative at this time, and they're a delay and disruptive tactic. They're Mr. Not Brooks. not a delay and disruptive tactic. Is that a judicial decision, determination, a judicial determination that you're making? I'm going to oh. mute you because we're going off on the judicial determinations. Every decision I make, sir, is by definition a judicial determination. It is on the record. If there is a conviction, you can raise whatever issues you want on appeal if you are convicted. Convicted. But we don't need to have this back and forth every time to further make the record when the record speaks for <coughs> itself. You were given plenty of opportunities throughout this trial to make offers of proof, to state your legal reasoning for either an objection or for a question that's being asked or for a whole host of other things. But right now you're not doing anything legally relevant. You're being disruptive. I would like you to be present. That is always what I want 
during this case. It certainly, I think, is important, but you can forfeit your right to be present by your conduct, which you have done repeatedly throughout this case. I will advise you that if you are in that courtroom, because I have put you there and you have not reclaimed the right to be present by number one, asking and then expressing a willingness to conduct yourself consistently with the quorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings, you will remain over there. And it looks like he took his headphones off. So I would. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you that if you fail to call a witness, you will forfeit your right to pr present any additional witnesses. And I'm doing this outside the presence of the jury right now for a reason. I need to know from you right now, you are unmuted. Who is your next witness? What you trying to say? That was very disrespectful, sir. You chose to take off your headphones. Yeah, you choose to I'm read. I'm muted. I'm muted. So why, why am I going to have my headphones on and I'm muted? Well, I would think your headphones help you hear. The they muting do. is so that I don't have to hear the disruption. Okay, well, then why should I need to hear So what let say? me be clear, sir. And you, you are not. be clear nothing. I don't got to listen to you. I will ask you one last time, sir. Who is your next witness? First of all, is she talking to me? This? We, gotta keep doing, we gotta keep doing this little childish stuff, dude. I gotta sit up here and I'm supposed to abide by every single rule, but don't nobody else gotta do that. The record should Judicial reflect that Mr. Repeated. Brooks is spouting off, making unsubstantiated yeah. the can allegations can against me. this court, Unless directly attacking the integrity of this court and these proceedings, while yet this refusing no to answer simple no, no questions. Integrity. Mr. Brooks, you That's are. That's not my name. I told you I don't consent to be in court that name. You are hereby advised this is the last time I will ask this question don't, don't talk or you will that. forfeit your right to present you any what, additional show me what, show me, witnesses show me where that's law. because show you are where not cooperating law. with this process. Show me that is law. That's all I'm asking. Show me that is lawful law. Mr. Brooks. How can, how can I forfeit not being able to have a defense? Are you kidding me? All I'm asking is that you conduct yourself with dignity, with decorum, and with respect. I will okay. gladly bring you back into this courtroom so you can present your additional witnesses You're but right. you need to ask me to come back into this courtroom with all due respect i'm tired of having this back and forth with you every day it's not my intention to it's come in here and, and have this these interactions with you every day it's not regardless to what you may think regardless to how you may feel that is not my intention i simply do what i do because i do not have the understanding so if i don't understand something i'm going to ask a question i apologize if it makes you feel that I'm intentionally trying to delay the uh, proceedings. If I'm intentionally trying to be disruptive, because that's not the case. And, it, and I feel very, 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 very disrespected every time the record is made, making it seem like that's what I'm attempting to do. So of course it's gonna make it's gonna frustrate. Of course it's gonna make me a little bit upset. And I just want you to understand that it seems to me the way I'm interpreting what you're doing, which is it is your courtroom. There's not a dispute. It's not up for debate. You control what's going on in there. It's not a dispute. But the way I'm interpreting what you're doing is that I'm being held in contempt. That's how I'm interpreting. Because one of the three things that's cited in the Illinois versus Allen, one of them is one of them is being gagged. I haven't been gagged. I haven't been gagged. One of them is held in contempt. What's the third, Mr. Brooks? What's the third? The third is removed from the courtroom while the trial continues, right? That's the third, right? And is that that's what's right. been done. Okay, so now, okay. so now, where does it say after that, that having me on a, 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 a headset uh, uh, or being able to see and hear and all this and this, how is that not prejudicing my defense? Sir, you can raise that even, issue on can, appeal. Even, you can this raise that issue that. on appeal this if you are this convicted. Is why I say that. This is why, this I, is why I, say I say that, though, because I can't even see. The only thing I can see right now when I'm looking at the TV is you. Is you in the prosecution table? I can't see anything table. else. I can't see anything else. I understand that, sir. I'm fully aware of that. So I'm not. I'm not fully so aware not, of what's I'm going on in the court. Don't don't I deserve that right don't, to don't be I able to see right and hear everything that's going on? If you can conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings, the answer then is yes. So, so I'm not going to have a debate with you about the law. I will ask you again: Would you like to come back into this courtroom? Are you going to kick me out, sir? I'm asking. 
asking the questions right now. Would you like to come back into this courtroom? Yes or no? It's a yes or no question. Would you like to come well, back into answer, this? Well, my answer, my answer was based on the reason why I'm answering like that is because the moment I say something, it's going to get me put out. I don't want to keep calling this stuff back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It makes it makes essentially it wastes time, really. Wastes time, really. I'm well aware of that. Yeah, but but then it's but then it's laid at my feet as if that's my attempt. You think I want to be over here, sir? I don't know what you want or don't want at this time. I know that we need to complete this trial and that you have frustrated today more than ever before the ability of this court to do that. Well, I apologize for you feeling well, that way, but I'm frustrated too. Way, but I'm frustrated nobody too. No, nobody, nobody seems to take no, that into account. I'm just as frustrated account. as everybody. Probably more. Probably then I suggest then I that you conform your conduct to the requirements there of courtesy no and decorum so that you don't run the risk of forfeiting your right to be present. But, but that falls no, on you and you alone, sir. There is no conduct. Is no I, I, don't, I don't understand what you mean by that. I really don't. Mr. Brooks, really don't. you may not understand it. I don't think that's accurate. I think you know exactly what you're doing. If that's what you think, that's fine. And I argue you have demonstrated sure. throughout sure. this case that you pay attention to witnesses' testimony, that you make cogent and coherent objections uh, at times that you have even had evidence suppressed in this case or stricken. That's the word I use during this case. You made an opening statement. You communicate with witnesses. So Your you Honor, clearly read, write, fair. and understand English. Fair. That's not an it's issue not, here, sir. It's it's not not Are you self-represented? Absolutely. Does that present difficulties and disadvantages? Absolutely. But that takes me back to when you waived your right to counsel and you did so knowingly, freely, voluntarily and with a full understanding of the disadvantages and advantages of doing so, uh, meaning advantages of having an attorney, the disadvantages of doing it on your own, and you made a deliberate decision to Your represent Honor, yourself, Honor, and that fair. comes at a risk to you of, yes, at times, not fully understanding the law, the rules of evidence, no. the rules of procedure, but you that's do so fair. at your peril. That's not fair, that's not fair to state, Your Honor, because... So I'm going to do the change. following, since I'm not really getting anywhere. I'm going to mute you for the moment. I'm not getting anywhere with him. I would like him to be brought over and he has a choice to make. He can come back over or he doesn't. Either way, he's going to be asked to call a witness in front of the jury. I will ask him three times if he fails to give me a direct answer and after the third time, I will make the appropriate finding but I will do that outside the presence of the jury. But we are going to continue. So we'll go off the record and he will come back over here. Thank you. We are in recess until that happens. I mean, just 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 to say something and then get kicked out. Man, I, I don't know what to tell her then. I don't, I don't nah, no, because I'm going to end up having to come back over here. And, don't y'all get tired of hauling all this stuff over here, over there, over here, over there? Over here, over here, over here. And the jury will be brought out and you'll be asked to call your next witness. Being called that name. So noted. We still need to address subject matter jurisdiction. Before the jury's brought out. I will not be doing that. Will it be proven for the record? The record stands. So is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question, Your Honor? I make no such agreements with you, sir. So that means you can answer a question then. Will we be addressing subject matter jurisdiction on the record, and will it be verified and proven? Non-responsive answer is a tacit agreement, Your Honor. Jury's coming out. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The defense may call its next witness. Who's here? Bertram Hayes, Aldrich, and Les Connell. Who was the last two? Aldrich and Les Connell. Let's go with uh, Deanna Aldrich. Go ahead, sir, your witness. Good afternoon, Miss Aldrich. Direct your attention. Well, first of all, let me back up a little bit. What do you currently do for a living? I'm retired. That's always pretty good. <laughs> Direct your attention to the evening of November 21 of 2021. Do you recall that evening pretty pretty good? Yes. Where were you staying at the time? I live on Maple Avenue. And during that evening, did you hear anything unusual? I did. And do you recall what that was? I heard a large thumping noise in my neighbor's yard. And when I came out to my porch, I saw a red SUV. Back up a little bit to the thumping noise. Can you describe that thumping noise? Would it just be thumping? Did it sound like a, a crash or, or anything of that nature? I believe it was like the engine dropping kind of noise. Okay. And you stated you looked out your patio and saw a red SUV? 
I did. Uh, do you recall how that SUV looked at that time? It was smashed to smithereens. <laughs> do you recall if the red SUV was still running at the time that you observed it? Yes. And at some point, did it cut off? Yes. And what did you see from that point? Before I seen it shut off, I seen it go forward in the driveway and then back up like three feet. And then someone got out of the car and ran around the bushes to the front of my building. And who's the someone that you uh, are referring to? At that time, I didn't have my glasses on, so I could not see clearly. What do you recall? As uh, far description as what? wise, yeah. Dark hair, possibly white or purple or whatever color shirt, and dark <laughs> pants. Do you recall a height? I think he was probably anywhere between 5'6 six and 6 foot. I really couldn't tell because of the angle. So uh, you're, I'm assuming then your patio is kind of on a, a upward base type of angle that you would have kind of been looking sort of down? I was looking down, down yes. Okay. And the individual you stated ran in what direction at the time that you were observing? My porch is here, and he ran from the driveway here around to the front of my building. Uh, did you see where the individual went from that point, or, or could you not see because of where you were positioned on the patio? He stopped to, if you were looking at the building, he stopped to the right of the building front. And the, the, the building front, is, is that a street? Yes, not all the way to the street, though. Okay. He was in the front yard on the grass. Did you at any time observe this individual jump over the hood? I was running in and out of my house, so I did not see because I was trying to find my glasses as I was running in and out. So is it fair to say you were trying to locate your glasses so you could get a better look at what, at what you were observing? Yes. Do you recall if the, the SUV had any tent, tenant windows? I do not recall. Uh, do you recall what time of the evening you heard the, the loud thumping and then observed the SUV? I do not recall. And before that evening, had you ever noticed that SUV before that evening? No. Did you speak with any of your neighbors to inquire who the SUV may have belonged to? No, I had. There was people coming outside from the building that the driveway was. And they were going to walk up to the vehicle, but they did not because I yelled to them and said, don't touch it. So that kind of would be fair to say that that kind of startled them and stopped them in their tracks? Yeah. Do you recall how many people there were? Maybe 10. And at some point, did uh, law enforcement uh, come to your uh, to your home and interview you about what you observed that evening? Yes. And do you know if they, well, I'm, I'm assuming they took a report. Would that be fair to say? They came up to my apartment and asked me some questions. Do you recall if they were writing it down or recording it? Writing it down. If you recall, did you did you ever learn what the loud noises were, were that you heard before seeing the uh, SUV? No. And the street that you observed the individual running toward, do you recall which, which street that would have been based on the direction? Arlington Avenue would be right directly in front of that building. You didn't see the individual run towards Maple Street? He ran towards Maple Street and came around the bushes directly to the right of my patio being up. But that general direction would have been, which street did you say? Or Arlington. 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 I apologize. Were you aware that there was a parade going on that evening? Yes. Did you attend? No. After you spoke with the law enforcement officers that evening, did any more law enforcement officers come back and, and interview, you, interview you at any time after that evening? They did not interview me that evening. They came early the next day on the 22nd. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. After the uh, the 22nd, did any, any other law enforcement come back out to interview? No. Do you recall the name of the officer that interviewed you? No. Uh, no, no further questions at this time. Thank you. Any calls? No calls, Your Honor. Thank you. Defense may call the next witness. Just one second, Your Honor. Defense calls Christopher Bertram. Go ahead, sir. Your witness. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Go ahead. Your witness. First of all, good afternoon. What do you currently do for a living? I do electrical work. Directing your attention to the evening of November 21st, 2021. Do you recall that evening pretty well? Not very. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? Yes. And what were you doing that evening? Taking my mother's car to our mechanic friend. Were you aware of a parade going on on that evening? No. Around what time were you taking your mom's car to be inspected? I don't recall. Do you recall seeing anything that caught your attention that evening? Yes. Can you state what that was? A smashed up red car. And do you recall where you saw that at? I believe it is Prospect Court Street. And at the time you observed this smashed up car, as you say, did, did you did you see anyone driving it? Yes. And were you able to make a subscription? A description, sorry, description of who was driving. I believe so. And what do you recall? 
I don't recall what I said. You don't recall what you said or saw? I don't recall what he exactly said when I gave my statement. Do you recall what you saw? No. Uh, you made reference to giving the statement. I'm, I'm assuming that would be to uh, law enforcement. Is that fair to say? Yes. And did they write down? Well, let me back up. How was that interview conducted? Was that an in-person interview over the phone? or In person. And do you recall if the uh, law enforcement officer was writing down what you were telling them or recording? I don't recall. Did you observe the vehicle stop at any point in time? No. So it was pretty much you just saw it just kind of just rolling past? Yes. Did you notice if the vehicle had any tents? Any what? Tents, like tenant windows? No. Do you recall in your interview with uh, law enforcement? Well, let me back up a little bit. Was it was your interview with law enforcement the same evening that you saw this vehicle or sometime after? The same evening. Do you recall stating during the, the interview that evening that you observed the driver as a black male with short hair and a short beard? I don't recall exactly what I said. Do you recall stating at any time during that interview that evening that you believe you saw the operator of the vehicle reach down and grab something as they were driving past? Yes. Did you ever see them? Did you ever see what was what you believe was being grabbed? No. And what did you think at that moment that you saw the operator of this vehicle reach down? I was unsure. Do you recall in your interview with law enforcement that evening stating that you, you thought it was possibly a gun? Yes. And where did you where did you observe the vehicle go after it had passed you? I turned away after it passed me. Do you recall what the operator of the, the vehicle was wearing at the time that it passed you? I do not remember. Do you recall during your interview with law enforcement that evening stating that you thought the operator was wearing a black sweater or jacket as it drove past you? If that is what is written. Do you recall saying that? No. And do you recall where your interview with law enforcement that that evening took place? Yes. And where did it take place? My house. And was anyone present with you during your interview with law enforcement that evening? Yes. And who was that? My mother. And do you recall what agency your interview was conducted by? Yes. And would you stay for the jury in the record? The FBI. Do you recall stating in your interview that evening with law enforcement that you heard a lot of gunshots? Yes. And do you recall, I think that's a little bit unfair to say, if you had to estimate where, where do you think those gunshots were coming from, like vicinity-wise? It sounded from downtown. And when you say a lot of shots, what would you describe as a lot of shots? Like a full magazine. Do you recall seeing the, the vehicle that you observed crash into anything? No. Do you recall stating in your uh, interview with law enforcement that evening that the vehicle appeared to slow down while traveling down Prospect Court? Yes. At some time after observing this vehicle, did you call 911? Yes. Do you recall around what time you called 911? No. Do you recall shortly after seeing this vehicle texting anyone? Yes. Do you recall who that was? My girlfriend. And what did you tell her? I don't remember. Do you recall telling her there's a shooting? Possibly. Did you see anyone else in the vehicle? No. But you do recall seeing the operator wearing a black sweater? I don't remember. Did you observe at any time that evening seeing someone run from the vehicle? No. Do you recall why you would have gave a description that evening when initially interviewed by law enforcement? Because I saw the person in the car. And how did that person look? I don't remember. Grounds? This answer may stand. What was the answer? He said, I don't recall or I don't remember. No further questions at this time. Thank you. Any cross? Thank you, sir. You may step down and you are excused. All right, go ahead and call your next witness. And when we get to the next break, I have uh, something to discuss outside of the presence of the jury that pleases the court. Do you want to do that now or before, after your next we, witness? We can. All right, I'll address a legal issue and we'll bring the jury back in when we're ready. I'll rise for the jury, please. Everyone can have a seat and then we'll go ahead, Mr. Brooks. I'm curious, some of these um, judging by the reports, how's the, how's, how are some of these answers allowed to to pass when they're coming straight from reports made by the people on the stand? Very curious. I don't understand your question. I'm not sure what you're asking me. I'm asking what I'm asking is reading from the report that the people on the stand are giving the report that they gave to uh, to law enforcement. If you're asking me whether there's a mechanism in the rules of evidence and how to establish that before the jury, the answer to that is yes. If you're asking me how you do that, I'm not going to answer that. 
I ain't, I didn't ask how. I just, I just, to be blunt, which I've been since the beginning of this trial, obviously, I see the whole strategy here by the prosecution. I, I see right through it. Don't have any cross examination, mainly because you, you've already schooled, schooled the people getting on the stand on how to answer certain things. Well, that is completely speculative on your part, without it's any obvious. basis in law or fact. It's obvious. You could ask questions that establish that. You can ask them if they've met with anyone. You haven't done that. So for you to say that right now is without basis. If you it's, want to... It's clear. If you are looking to elicit what they said in the report, there is a way under the rules of evidence based upon the way the witnesses have answered to clarify that. But that requires you to call certain witnesses. I'm not going to give you any more legal to, advice further to, than that. I don't think I have to so, call any other witnesses that's If you're asking me to strike their testimony based on your perceived... I didn't, I didn't perceived, say anything about that. Alright, then I'm going to bring the jury back out and you're going to call your next witness. So I'm so not hearing you, a request from you at this time. You said you wanted to raise a legal issue. What's the legal issue? The legal issue is what, how how is the state allowed to coach the You're people? You're assuming they stand? spoke to them and coached them. It's obvious. I'm not I'm not stupid. Well, I disagree with that, sir. Again, you could ask questions all of a sudden, to lay a foundation all of a sudden the state with these don't witnesses. Got, all of a sudden, for the first time in trial, all of a sudden now they don't got no cross. That's clearly a rush to try to get through the case. Hurry up. We just gonna not we just gonna let these people go. Well, this is not, argument. Come on, man. That's, this is argument on your part. Sir, it is it. pure commentary at this point. I just want, I just want that point. on the record. I see through it. And your nice see try, through, but I see through it, has absolutely no basis in law. <laughs> yeah, I know that's what's being done. You Come could on, ask man. these I'm, questions. You could on, ask man. these witnesses the right certain questions, and you're far, not far from an idiot. They're your witnesses, sir. If you believe, so every so I'm going to start asking every witness up here that they seem just to mysteriously now not have any cross for. Have they been coached to answer the way they answer? Because well, you can't I ask find, that, but you I can ask them if they met with any one ahead of their testimony here funny. today, which you've done funny. with other witnesses. I find it very funny that these are their reports, and now all of a sudden, you can, oh, I saw the person in the car. Oh, right. but Mr. Brooks, uh, I saw them reach for something. Oh, I don't, I don't recall what they had on. Mr. Brooks, there's no purpose for you saying for this right don't now. don't know what they had on. Find that very right. I'm having the jury brought out. I'm instructing you to on, avoid man. the commentary when the jury comes nah, out of you. I, I forfeit your right to be present. There's an issue that we do need to pick up potential as to a witness by the name of Abel Lescano. He has prior criminal history. So as long as the jury's out, we should probably discuss that. I would like to provide the defendant and the court with... So that had to be that had to be said. The defendant. That's not how it was said. I that that was how I said. You want to run the record back, Mr. Brooks? So I'm the only one. I got one. Mr. I got Brooks. one ear that work, and I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you, so that no, you not. understand Ain't none your of this to witness benefit me, so let's has be clear a prior record. Your Honor, when I leave the table, I'm away from the courtroom, and I have to elevate my voice. So she Alleged had to elevate record her voice of just Lescott. for that. Stop talking. Oh man. man, like I don't oh. know who y'all be thinking y'all fooling. I set the value, return the value. This. Uh, One more interruption and you're going to be removed to the next court. That's what you want to do anyway. Do not interrupt Attorney Opera. So can Your you Honor, tell, I can believe you he has seven prior criminal convictions. Yes. I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. And we're taking a break. I'd like to continue by bringing the jury out and uh, having you call your next witness. I trust that you're ready to do that, sir. Madam? We need to complete the task. Oh, we do. Um, what is the state's request then as it relates to the prior record. We believe the proper answer would be seven prior convictions. A copy of the record was provided to the defendant. It was. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have a position on the prior convictions for this witness? The state is asking for a determination by this court that there are seven prior convictions for purposes of questioning the witness. I don't know what you're asking. You've been provided with a listing of the record. The state is asking that I make a determination about how many for purposes of questioning of this witness. Do you have any comment, statement, or position on that? Looks like it's nine over here. Which is the one the state referenced that the charges are listed, but they were dismissed? Well, it's recorded as 06 CM 2039 does DM slash RI, which means dismissed and read in. 2X MBJ, which be two times uh, misdemeanor bail jumping, dismissed and read in. So no convictions from that. So why is it on the sheet? Any statement you want to make, sir, on what the number of convictions this court should consider <coughs> under 906 Nine. What is dismissed and read in? Does that mean there was no charge? When there was a conviction for something else, the charge was dismissed and read in, and then the court 
considered it at the time of sentencing. So where it says dismissed and read in, that would be the restraining order and the MBJ? Right, misdemeanor bail jumping. So two counts of violate harassment restraining order were dismissed and read in, along with two counts of misdemeanor bail jumping dismissed and read in. So then eight should be eight. The OWI first would not be criminal. The statute requires conviction of a crime or an adjudication of delinquency. So there's no crime for an OWI? An OWI first would not be a crime. It would be a forfeiture. I still would say eight just based on the fact that there's continued OWIs all the way up to a fifth. We remind the parties of the factors to consider for exclusion include the lapse of time since the conviction, or in this case convictions, the rehabilitation or pardon of the person convicted, the gravity of the crime, the involvement of dishonesty or false statement in the crime, the frequency of the convictions, and any other relevant factors. So based on that, do you have any argument that it should be less than that? Less than what, eight? Well, it be less than seven. He has seven convictions as I count them. And that's not counting OWI uh, first? Correct, because it's not a crime. It can't be counted. Then it's seven. should be seven. Do you want to make any argument about whether any should be excluded under the statute based upon the factors I just read to you? Well, you, you already made reference to one of them not being a crime, so that brings it to eight. I don't understand the whole... Uh, well, for example, the last conviction was in 2007. It's now 2022. So do you want to make an argument to the court that he's been rehabilitated? I don't want to speculate on <laughs> the next man's life, but if it's seven on here, well, I guess it brings it to seven. And whether OWI first is not a crime, it's, it, it still counts as a, a what it essentially is no way to get to two, three, four, and five without the first. It's like seven to me. All right, then. Anything further from the state on this? No, Judge, thank you. I'll find that for purposes of his testimony that this witness has seven convictions. He may be asked, have you been convicted of a crime? His answer should be yes. And then the follow-up, how many times? The answer will be seven. That will have to be told to Mr. Lascano before he testifies, Your Honor, I believe. I agree. State willing to relay that information? I'd rather not. Given the accusations levied by Mr. Brooks, I think it's better we do it in open court, Your Honor. All right. Who's your next witness? Will it be Mr. Lascano? Because if it is, I'll just have him come in now and I can put him on the stand and advise him of that. May I ask who's, who's present right now? For sure, Mr. Hayes and Mr. Lascano. And I'm not sure the 330 uh, witnesses... I think are probably on their way. Let's just bring Mr. Lascano in in case he's not your first, but then I don't have to deal with the interruption with the jury. Subject matter jurisdiction, Your Honor. Court declines to address that. Still has yet to be verified and proven for the record. Your objections noted for the record. Do you want Mr. Lascano on the stand or are you going to call Mr. Hayes first? I don't currently have, I can't find paperwork for Mr. Hayes. Can a police report or something be provided in case I want to call Mr. Hayes first? Yes. We will accommodate that request. It'll just take me a minute, Your Honor. Mr. Lascano, I'm just going to have you for a moment take a seat. You're not going to testify just yet, but just come up and take a seat just at the end of my jury box for now. I'm not going to have you come up to the witness stand. I want to advise you that I'm aware you have a prior record. And so for purposes of testimony, I've made a determination that if asked, have you been convicted of a crime? Your answer should be yes. And then if someone asks the follow-up, how many times? The answer to that is seven. Have you heard me say that? Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. All right, thank you. I'm not sure that you'll be called next, but I wanted to do that while I didn't have the jury here. All right, then let's have the jury brought out. The defense may call its next witness. Defense calls, is it Jason Hayes? Jason? Go ahead, sir, your witness. Just one second. I accept for value and return for value this document for the record. Good afternoon, Mr. Hayes. Is, is that how you pronounce Hayes? Yep. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a retail sales associate for a food broker, Damon Worldwide. Been doing that for a long time? 21 years. Yes, a long time. The evening of November 21st, 2021. You recall that evening pretty well? Fairly well, yes. What were you doing that evening? Went to the parade. Did you go to the parade with family, friends? I went there with my daughter. Do you recall what time you arrived? 30 minutes before the parade started. Were you scheduled to do any uh, marching in the parade itself? No. Or just, just spectating? Yes. Did you, did you say yes to being a spectator? Yes. Thank That's you. what I thought he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure there was... Yeah. He answered, he answered. Anything unusual catch your eye that day that you recall? Yes. And what did you see? Besides the parade? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that that was unusual that caught your eye that, that evening. Well, where we were, yes, a, a red truck came through where we were. It honked and swerved. Uh, what? I guess I guess I want to back up a little bit. Where were you positioned at that, at that we time? We were all the way at the beginning of the parade. Okay. Like, it was Maine and, the corner of Maine and White Rock. Okay. And you said you observed this vehicle honked and swerved? Yes. What did it swerve from? 
I'm sorry? Where, where did it swerve from? Where? Or was it, I guess the correct question would be, why did it swerve? I don't know. I wasn't driving. I don't know what his intentions were. And you stated that the vehicle honked. Was was that just a single honk or was it a beep, beep? or One honk. Do you, do you recall stating that it honked several times? I don't and recall. When, when you were initially... I don't recall. So I'm... Well, before we get to that, did you see where the vehicle went after it honked and swerved? Yes, it kept on going straight down Main East, the same road to the parade went. Did you get a description of who was driving the vehicle you saw that? I did not. Did you get a license plate? I did not. Uh, do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? No. And I'm assuming at some point you were, or you either were interviewed by law enforcement or seek to be interviewed. <coughs> By law enforcement. I did, um, by a detective. And do you recall if that was the same evening or? It was not the same evening. So it was, it was a couple days, days after. Yeah. Do you recall in that interview uh, that, that you had with, with the detective stating that your kids were playing in the roadway and the operator of the vehicle honked the horn several times and veered to the left around the kids? Yes. So in your opinion, it wasn't trying to strike the kids? Correct, yes. And after it continued, I think you said east? Yep. Would that be cor correct, East? Yep. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone? When I you... did not, no. Do you recall what side of the street the vehicle was traveling on at that it time? It was on the right side. On the right side. So we were on the north side of the road. So the right side would be. Yep. Did you see the vehicle stay on the north side of the road for, for the duration of the time that you observed? Yes. So you never saw it go to the other side of the road or? No. No further questions at this time. Thank you. Any cross? Oh, yes, just briefly. Good afternoon, Mr. Hayes. Good afternoon. Thank you for your attendance, sir. Mr. Hayes, do you remember seeing a police officer at this intersection as well? I don't recall. Okay. Do you remember writing in your report or telling the police officer that a police officer chased the vehicle on foot? Objection, leading. Overruled. It's cross. I do remember that I thought I saw a police chasing after the car on foot. Okay. And do you remember also telling the same officer that the SUV took off down the street and that it accelerated? Yes. Objection. <laughs> is that... Hold oh, on, there's been an objection. I guess the objection to be what, what officer is being referred to wasn't clear. Overruled. The statement continue asking the question. I guess I was asking, what it, was that referring to interview officer? Your or? objection is noted. It's overruled. The statement asked the question fully. Is that your recollection, sir, that the vehicle sped off and accelerated away? Yes. Objection speculative. Overruled. Do you also recall telling the officer who interviewed you that the driver of the vehicle had a dark complexion and a beard? Yes. Is that accurate with your recollection of the driver? Yes. But you didn't see a face. You couldn't no. I identify anybody leading. beyond those descriptions, Hold correct? On. Hold on. There's been an objection to leading. It's overruled. The witness may answer. No. All right. Thank you. So those were all my questions. Thank you. Any redirect, sir? Briefly. Very briefly. The defense may call its next witness, please. Quick question before I do. Who's supposed to be arriving at 3.30? Just saw it. Just saw it now. I'm not sure. Babyitz and Urell will be here at 3.30. Mr. Liscano is here now, Your Honor. Thank you. And who's here now? Just trying to get clear. Are you going to call Mr. Liscano? Uh, it would appear so. He's the one that's here. All right. Then he may. The defense is calling Abel Liscano, correct? The defense is calling... A bow? A bow. A bell? Lascano? Your witness, sir. Good afternoon, <laughs> Mr. Lascano. What do you do for a living currently? I'm a hairdresser. No judgment whatsoever on this question. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes, I have. And how many times? Seven. Do you recall the the night of November 21st, 2021 pretty well? No, it's been a minute. Best as I can, yeah. What were you doing that evening, if you recall? The Christmas parade. Uh, were you marching in the parade? Or? No, I was watching it. Who were you there with? Family, friends? My wife and my daughter. Do you recall where you were positioned to watch the parade? Uh, I was standing Bible. in front of the Corey Insurance on Main Street. Is that part of Main Street close to like a, a, a side street, if you, <laughs> if you recall? Not too far from Maple. Do you recall the side streets being barricaded during the parade? I don't remember. Uh, do you recall what time you arrived at the parade that evening? It had just started, so whatever time that was at. You recall something other than the parade catching your attention that, that day? People getting hurt, yeah. And what did you see that day, if you recall? I saw a red SUV plow over a bunch of people. And did you see the driver of this SUV you're referring to? Yeah, you're standing right there. And how many people did you see in the vehicle? Just one, the driver. So, do you recall flagging down? 
down a law enforcement vehicle that evening? Yeah, I do. And do you recall what you told the officer that evening? Uh, not very well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to uh, see if anything brings back some recollection. First, do you recall the name of the officer you flagged down that evening? No, officer Moss. Do you recall telling Officer Moss that you observed three or four people in the SUV as it passed you? I don't remember that. So, to your recollection, the SUV that you saw, did it have tinted windows? I don't remember. And do you remember what the description was that evening that you gave it to, gave to law enforcement? No, I told him it was a red SUV. The description of the driver, do you remember that? Yeah, I know he was a black male. Is that all you recall about your description? That's all I remember. After seeing this vehicle, what did you do? We left. I got my family out of there. And where did you go? We headed back to the car. Do you recall where your vehicle was parked? I believe it's the Lindholm or a building on Maple Street. And did you see the vehicle stop on Maple Street? Which vehicle? The SUV that you claim you saw. Oh, no, I didn't see it stop, no. I kept going through the parade. And speaking with, is it Detective Moss? Well, speaking with law enforcement that evening, do you recall advising law enforcement that you observed three black subjects running from the vehicle? No, I don't remember that. If it pleases the court, I would like to show the, the witness this. I'm referring to page four exactly. Is it a statement this witness personally wrote? I believe it's what I don't think he wrote it himself. So it's a summary written by another person. I don't know if it's Officer Moss or Detective Moss. I'm not sure if what his rank is. Um, continue with your questions. I'm going to deny the request that you show the, the exhibit or the paperwork to the witness. Do you recall making the statements to Detective Moss that you observed one, one where it says one was described as running southbound on Maple Torres College Avenue? Do you recall that? No, I don't. Do you recall stating that the other two were described as running in a westerly direction from the rear of 338 Maple Street? No. Do you recall stating that one black subject was described as tall, wearing a blue top and blue and black pants, while the other subjects were described as two short black males wearing sweatpants um, barely a little bit of that so with which of these subjects do you vi mil minimally recall wearing those uh, those items that evening no you asked me if i remember people running and i said no i remember describing those people to him i remember so where did you observe the, those standing by the vehicle where i found the vehicle where i spotted it just so we have clarity describe describe the subjects you saw that evening standing by the vehicle i don't remember that good I mean, you were describing them so I, it brought back a little oh. bit but I, I can't tell you that's that was too long ago and how did you come upon the the vehicle at the the address of 338 maple street that evening well, i was walking my family back to the car trying to get them to safety so i was keeping an eye out and i spotted it do you recall stating that you saw the suv reverse into a driveway no do you recall do you recall why that would be reported no when i found it it was park 30. do you recall when you initially had the, the interaction with detective moss do you recall leading him to where the vehicle was ultimately found yeah do you recall yelling at subjects standing outside of the building where or, or near where the vehicle was that evening i remember asking them i don't remember yelling at them do you recall why do you recall why the report says that you advised the detective moss that there are three black subjects specifically black subjects running from the vehicle no i don't remember were you yourself injured in this incident that evening? No. Do you recall stating that, well, let me back up for a minute. Did you speak with another detective that evening, if you recall? Yes, I did. Uh, do you recall if that was Detective Coates? I don't remember his name. So it'd be fair to say that you spoke with two different law enforcement officers that evening. Yeah. <laughs> do you recall in your in your interview with Detective Coates, in reference to the vehicle that you saw that evening, do you recall telling Detective Coates that it appeared there were three or four people in the Ford Escape as it passed you. No, I don't remember that. Do you recall in your interview with Detective Coates that evening stating that you could not provide any description of the occupants other than that they appeared to be African American? Yeah, I remember saying that. So it would be fair to say that you observed African Americans in this vehicle that you saw, correct? The, re the reason why I came up with three or four people was because when I was walking by and I saw the car, there was two or three black males standing by the vehicle. And there was four, three, at least three or four more on the porch. So I figured they were by the vehicle. It must have been the one 
ones trying to hide the vehicle because they were standing in front of it or real close to it. In your opinion, did it look like they were nervous or attempting to hide? Well, everybody was running past them and running really, walking really fast, and they were just standing around there. They were the only ones not doing much. So yeah, they stood out. Now, this is the, the question actually was in reference to when you s spoke with Detective Coates that evening and, and it's in reference to seeing the vehicle in the parade as it passed you. Do you recall at that point, while at the parade that evening, do you recall stating to Detective Coates that it appeared that there were three or four people in the Ford Escape as it passed you during the parade, Dave? No, I don't remember that. Any reason why the uh, detective coach would report that that's what that, that that's what you stated to him? Like I said before, I saw three, three, two or three people by the vehicle, so I assumed they were they were with the vehicle, so they must have been in the vehicle during the parade. I saw the driver going by because he hit somebody right in front of us. Do you recall? in your interview with the uh, detective coach that evening stating that the three individuals and, and i'm referring to who you saw next to the vehicle so it's clarification the three individuals who were standing in a line shoulder to sh shoulder to sh shoulder to shoulder as african-american males yeah so it's fair to say that's what you observed that evening i saw these two of them and look like they were standing in front of it and during that interview with detective coach that evening do you recall stating to detective coach that you may be able to recognize the older male. So I'm assuming one of the individuals that you saw standing shoulder to shoulder was was a, a older male. Yeah, I don't remember any reason why multiple. Well, I'm not gonna say multiple. Uh, two. Any reason why the two detectives that you spoke with that night both reported that you stated you saw three black subjects running from the vehicle? No. And during the parade incident, were you or anyone you were with injured that evening? No. No further questions at this time. Making any cross? Yes, Your Honor. Sir, you said you watched the parade near Curry Insurance, is that correct? Yeah, right in front. Do you remember you said you saw the <coughs> SUV strike some people in the parade? Yeah. Yes. Do you remember what group of people in the parade? Can you remember anything about the, the name or the banner or the costumes or anything like that? Jason Lee. Overruled. No, I don't to you. Jason. Overruled. I don't remember. Do you remember seeing the SUV strike more than one person? Yeah. Jackson, speaking to you. Overruled. About how many people did you see the SUV strike, sir? Jackson, speaking to you. It was crowds. I mean, when it was coming through, through, and I, at first it looked like it was just pushing people out of the way. It just kept swerving back and it was just plowing everybody out of the way until it got to in front of us. Then it actually hit somebody and just, just did like a cartwheel in there. You remember that? Yeah, it was right in front of us. So, Mr. Liscano, I, I want to talk about the moment when you located this vehicle on Maple, okay? I'm going to ask uh, Madam Clerk, could you please turn on the AV system? We're going to put up States Exhibit 65. Objection, objection to the relevancy of Exhibit 65. Noted, overruled. Do you recognize the area on the screen that's yeah. shown in this picture? Yeah, I believe that's Central Middle School. Where? Uh, right at where the stairs is. Okay, the, the red brick on the left side of the picture? Yeah, objection okay. speculative. Overruled. And would you agree with me the house where the SUV was found was up in this area here where I just put the green dot on the screen? Yeah, objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. That looks right, correct, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. All right, we're going to clear the screen and we're going to play this entire clip for 36 seconds. Please watch and see if you see yourself or any of your family members in this clip. Objection to the relevancy of this video to this particular witness. Overruled. Overruled on what grounds, Your Honor? Got a tacit agreement. Sir, did you see yourself or your family in that clip? Objection, special <laughs> to you. Overruled. No, I did not. Now, you said you did see, by the time you walked past the car, you saw two or three black males standing near the car, right? Objection, mischaracter mischaracterization of this. He said three specifically said the number. Overruled. And you also said you saw two or three what you thought to be black males on the porch of the residence there, correct? Objection. Stated it was black males. Asked and answered. Overruled. No. I'm the, sorry, go ahead. No, there was two or three standing by the vehicle. Okay. And then on the porch there was maybe three or four or more people. I, I don't know if they were... I'm sure they were white, but okay. I didn't. I was trying to not make it out because at the time I believed that they were with the vehicle, so I didn't want them to see that I saw them. So I just I'm did sure. what I thought was right at the time. Do you happen to know the people that live at this house? 
objection speculative. Oh. No, I do not. Would it be reasonable, do you think, Mr. Lescano, that people living in the house heard the crash and came outside and that's who you saw standing there by the vehicle? Objection. There was never any cra crash mentioned. I'll sustain calls for speculation. You described that at the time you went by on Maple Street, there was a lot of people running around in the area. Is that correct? Objection. Mischaracterization of testimony. Overruled. Yes, there was. And these are people hurrying away from the parade with their families trying to get to safety just like you were, correct? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Yes. You didn't see anything like that in States Exhibit 65, did you? No, I did not. You said on direct examination that you saw the driver of the SUV in the parade. Is that right? Yes, I did. And you see that driver present in this courtroom here today, please? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Yes, he's sitting right over there. Are you sure about that, sir? Yes. Objection. Speculative. Overruled. You said and that... this characterizes the testimony because that, that was not testified to before on uh, direct. Oh, your objections are overruled. I believe the witness already answered. Go ahead. <laughs> Did you happen to notice in Exhibit 65 the red SUV in that video clip that you watched? No. You didn't see it Couldn't at all, see it. did you? No. Okay, just wondered. Mr. Liscano, have you and I ever spoken about this case, sir? No. What about Attorney Basie here to my right? You and her ever talk about this case or your testimony? Objection hearsay. Um, overruled. No. Mr. Wichow on the end, did you ever talk to him about Objection. your test testimony, sir? Objection hearsay. Overruled. No. All right, thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Yep. You stated you stated that you saw the driver, correct? Yeah. Of the SUV that you saw that day, correct? Yeah. How did the driver look that day you saw him? Scruffy, he had a scruffy beard and he was a black male. Did you see what the driver was wearing? No, I don't remember that. Did you see if the driver had any hair? I don't remember that either. Did you see if the driver had any anything noticeable about their appearance, tattoos, scars, marks, anything like that? No. I saw the side, the profile, the side. You were flying fast down that street. I wasn't paying attention to the color clothes you were wearing. And he was a black male and I a scruffy beard. First thing I told my wife is he was a black guy driving. And do you recall how long you were able to get a side view, as you called it, of the alleged driver? Well, it had to be a couple seconds. And in a couple seconds time, you were able to make out the driver's profile and race just by a couple seconds. Yeah, it's not hard. It's all if you were white or if you were black and if you had a beard. No, that's it. I don't know what color shirt you had on, if you had hair, a hat on backwards. So that leads back to the question of, is that the only person you saw in the vehicle? When I remember, yes. I saw the driver. Like I said before, the reason why I thought there was three or four because I saw three or four people around the vehicle when I spotted it. So would it be That's fair, the only reason? Would it be fair to say that when you spoke with two different detectives that evening, the evening of the parade, both of those officers reported that you stated there were three or four people in the SUV as it passed you. Is that fair to say? Well, wait, can you repeat that again? Just for clarification, you already stated previously in testimony that you spoke with two different detectives that evening, correct? Yes, I did. And both detectives that you spoke with that evening, the evening of November 21st, 2021, you stated to both of those law enforcement officers, detectives, that you observed three or four people in the SUV. Like I said before, the reason why I said there must have been three or four was because they were standing by a vehicle. So I assumed that they were with the vehicle. I didn't. I don't remember seeing them in the vehicle when they were hitting. When you were hitting the people, you stated this to both. To both. Detectives, two different detectives, the evening of November 21st, 2021, and this was in relation to what you saw from the vehicle at the parade, not where the vehicle was later found. Any reason why you stated to both detectives in relation to what you saw at the parade, why both detectives in their reports stated you told them that you observed three or four people in the SUV at the time of the parade. So what's your question? The question is, why did you report that to two different detectives on the same evening. Like, like I told you before, when I walked past the vehicle, I spotted more than one individual standing in front of the vehicle. So I no, assumed no, no, they no. were with the vehicle. I'm sorry. That's why I said they were inside. I'm sorry. That, that's why I said they were they were in the vehicle. I said there had to be at least three of them in the vehicle. That's the only reason I said that. So why would you report that you saw this during the parade? Mm -hmm. And during both interviews with detectives that evening, the evening of November 21st, 2021, you also stated to both detectives that you observed three or four black or African-American is, is the word used, three or four African-Americans running from the vehicle. Any reason why both detectives reported that you said that? I don't remember. No further questions. Thank you, sir. You, can, you may step down. We have additional witnesses here. Yes, sir. Right. There's two left. So the two left on your list. So I'm, I'm guessing that's... Oh, I know it is. Just give me one quick second, Your Honor. One quick second. Go ahead. 
Sorry about that, Your Honor. I'm just making sure I have the correct paperwork. This is what I was doing. Some of this stuff is so much, so much paperwork. Okay, I'm ready, Your Honor. Go ahead. Call your next witness. Kathleen Urell. Your, your, Urell? Your, your witness. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, no, Miss Urell. Is it Urell? Urell. Urell. What do you do for a living? I'm in workforce management for a call center. November 21st, 2021. Directing your attention there. You recall that, that evening pretty well? Off and on, sir. That's fair. It has been a while. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? <laughs> yes, sir. And what were you doing that evening? At what time? Around 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish. I was dropping off my children who were participating in the parade. And did you yourself stay for the parade? Partial parade, yes. Partial meaning maybe a few minutes? Until my group of children went by. Okay. Uh, do you recall where you were positioned uh, during watching your group participate in the parade? Day? Yes, on north and east, right on the corner there. East. If you're going parade route, it would be on the right-hand side. Just just so we have clarification, can uh, we pull up the exhibit? I believe it's 15. We can. Thank you. Go ahead, and thank you. Can we show it to the witness first? Um, he doesn't want it published, so just to the witness for now. Just not not yet. Just I, I want to make sure the witness gets a chance to view it first. Can you see that uh, on your screen yet? I do. And using the touch screen, it's a touch screen. Can you point out where it's you... It's not published, so oh. do you want it published? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, published. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to point so that out. So just so I know, to use the touch, it has to be published? No, she could use it, but if you're going to have her do it, it should be done in front of the oh, jury. Fair. Okay. Go ahead. I think we got to wait on the jury, right? Thank you. Um, for the jury, can you, using the touch screen uh, on your screen, can you point out exactly where you were positioned? When I was watching it? Yes, when you were watching. Right on the corner. Sorry. Oh, well, if you want to <laughs> can you clear, can again, you clear that, it again. the arrow? We'll clear it. You can do it again. Yeah. If you don't want, do you want the arrow? Well, it was to the... Clear arrow. it again. Okay. So it's a touch <laughs> screen. So use your index finger and you can draw a circle. Okay. I was going to say that. Well, I mean, it was right I, there. But I was going to say a circle or a little dot if well i thought i would do with that yeah oh well, <laughs> heavy we'll hands so it, press and hold while you draw okay and you said that would be approximately east main and northeast correct and do you recall if those will there's side streets right there that, that you can see is is that fair to say correct and those side streets would be northeast and buckley correct correct do you recall if there were barricades at those? I can't honestly recall. I can't be sure. We can take exhibit 15 down. And you said you stayed at the parade until your group had, had passed. Correct. And what time did you leave? I can't determine the time. It was right after my group of kids went by. And where'd you go from here? I walked down. Well, I went to go get the car because I had to go pick them up at the end of the parade. And I'm assuming at some point your attention got drawn to something happened. That'd be fair to say? Not necessarily. Uh, what do you remember when, when you went to go get the vehicle to pick up members of your group but that that be fair to say first i don't want to assume yeah do you recall anything happening at that point a uh, situation <laughs> did occur before the said big event that took place uh, what do you recall happening at that time once you were on your way to get get your vehicle i think i need more specifics from you to give the details you may be looking for while you were getting your vehicle did you observe anything happening did you overhear about anything happening at that point? Nothing of that nature. Well, all I can say is that I was walking past White Rock. Did you see anything that may have alerted your attention at that time? Yes, a car coming through the parade at the beginning on White Rock where the parade was starting. So when I left, I walked down Main to White Rock on the corner there. Then a gentleman, a child who I don't know who they were and myself walked across the street. And at this time, a car was beeping and weaving around a slight curve that White Rock has and then continued <laughs> continued on. Did you see where the sorry, did you see where the car went at that point? Yes I did. As it came around the slight curve White Rock has, it started to move forward and then it went straight across when I was thinking it was going to leave the parade route. If you leave the parade route on Main, you're leaving. Sorry, if you turn left, you're leaving the parade route. If you're turning right, you're going right into the parade. And it went right to the, if you're looking at the parade, it was on the right-hand side. And it's continued on into the parade. I want to back up a little bit. Uh, when you first observed this 
car, as you say, you recall that it was blowing his horn. Yep, it was the horn was beeping. Do you recall if you saw who was operating that vehicle? Unfortunately, sir, I can't recall. Do you recall if you might have seen multiple people in the vehicle at that time? Or? You know, unfortunately, due to the time passing, I cannot recall. That's fair. It has been a while. Do you recall about what time that was that you observed the vehicle? Again, I, I can't be sure. Sorry if I keep asking. No, I, the, I can't be sure. I'm sorry. At the at the time that you observed the, the vehicle, did you see it strike anyone? I did not, or at least I don't recall. I'm sorry. And do you recall if the, if the vehicle was speeding at that point that you observed it? It wasn't speeding, but it was, all I can state is it wasn't speeding. Did you happen to catch the license plate number of the vehicle at that time? No, not at all. Do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? I couldn't recall, I'm Any sorry. windows rolled down or up at the time you observed it? No, unfortunately, I don't remember. Do you recall if the vehicle pl passed close to where you were, were walking at at the time? Yeah, it was close enough that it could have easily have had uh, clipped me or the two people that were in front of me. Were you or the two people that you referred to in front of you, were any of you any of you hurt at that time? No. No further questions right now. Hey, Cross. Yes, thank you. Do you remember meeting on December 2nd, 2021 for an interview with Detective Jay Carpenter from the Waukesha Police Department? I remember the, I remember going as to a lot of topic of conversations. I unfortunately can't um, recall those too clearly. Do you remember telling Detective Carpenter that you only observed a driver in the vehicle? Jay should be Yeah, I overruled. I, I can't Jay be too sure. Overruled. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. I, I can't be too sure. Again, some of the conversations I might have had that day. Can we please put up for everybody Exhibit 15 again? Can we zoom in on the intersection of East and Main? Your testimony is that you were standing here on the northeast corner of Buckley and Main Street. Is that right? Correct. Objection already answered that ax and answered. You said correct? Correct. And after your children walked by in the parade, you walked in this direction towards the intersection of White Rock and Main. Is that correct? Objection correct. leading and speculative. Was that the rule as to both? Correct, that was. How many children do you have, Miss Ms. Urell? Objection irrelevant. Overruled. Four children. All four of your kids were marching in the parade that day, weren't they? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. Your oldest daughter, Charlotte, she was 14 at the time? Yes. She was marching with the extreme <laughs> dance group as an alumni, wasn't she? She was Object handing out candy. Objection. There was an objection. It's overruled. I didn't need a state while I was objecting. We still need a 15. A Yes, please. You see on that map the five points intersection? Yes. When you were standing in the crosswalk at White Rock and Maine, could you see the five points intersection? I could not. You didn't see your kids get hit, did you? I did Objection not. Objection leading. Sorry. Again, sorry. Objection hearsay. Overruled. You didn't? I did not. Did you see them later that night? Objection leading. Overruled. I was only able to see two of my children that night. When did you see the other two? Days later, when I was able to leave Children's Hospital. As their mother, you were directly involved in their medical care and the decisions that were made in that process in the days after the parade? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Yes, their father and I. Charlotte suffered a chipped vertebrae from being struck, didn't she? She did. Objection, Lee. Overruled. She did. Your daughter, Alice, she was 10 at the time, wasn't she? She was. She suffered chipped front teeth, is that correct? Yes. And facial scarring? Yes. And road rash? Yes. And a broken fibula and tibia? Yes. And broken metatarsal bones? Yes. She was observed in a concussion protocol, is that correct? She was. Your daughter Vivian, she was marching with the extreme dance group too, wasn't she? Yes, she was. How old was she in November of 21? She just turned seven. Vivian suffered a severe concussion, didn't she? Objection, lady. Yes. And road rash? Extreme road rash. And a lung contusion? Yes. And facial scarring? Yes. And your seven-year-old seven -year daughter, Vivian, suffered a broken tailbone, didn't she? She did. Your <laughs> son, Grayson, he was eight on November 21st, 2021. Is that correct? That is Jackson correct. Lady. He was walking with the extreme dance group handing out candy. Is that right? He was. He went to the hospital after the parade, didn't he? Yes. He suffered a compound fracture in his femur. Is that correct? An open compound fracture. Meaning the bone came through the skin? Yes. You're actually here saying, I don't believe he's a doctor. Overruled. Was that a yes? Yes. A police officer saved Grayson's life by placing a tourniquet on that open, open leg wound. Is that correct? Yes. I don't have any other questions. No redirect. Thank you, Mandy. We stepped down. Can we call your next witness, please? So we're going to take down these exhibitors. You're going to stay up oh, there. Oh, thank you. We'll take it down. Please call your next witness. <clears throat> Just one second. So you want more person here, right? It's my understanding. She's in the courtroom ready to go, Your Honor. Uh, defense calls Catrice. I don't know how to say the last name. 
Can you give me the spelling that you have? B A B I A S Z. Go ahead, your witness. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Babias. Correct. I'm surprised I got it right. What do you do for a living? I am a law enforcement dispatch supervisor. And how long have you been doing that now? I've been in law enforcement for 16 years. The evening of November 21st, 2021. Were you on duty that evening? I was not. Where were you doing that evening? I was attending the Waukesha Christmas Parade with my family. And do you recall what time you arrived there with your, with your family that, that evening? I arrived to the parade shortly after it started. So it was right after 4 p.m. And do you recall where you were positioned at with your family uh, when you arrived at the parade that evening? Yes. And where were you positioned at? I was um, towards the beginning of the parade. I was on Main Street where it connects with White Rock. Did anything catch your eye that evening when you were positioned watching the parade with your family? Yes. What did you see? I saw a red SUV coming from White Rock Avenue. The vehicle caught my attention because... People started yelling, and the vehicle, the driver, was honking the horn. And do you recall, to the best, to the best of your knowledge, it's been a little bit. The driver of the vehicle you observed was honking his horn. Was it gesturing to people? Uh, yes. What, what do you see? What did you see the the gesturing as? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, what was the gesturing? What was the driver gesturing? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's okay. Uh, so he was taking his hand and going like this really rapidly aggressively with, with you yourself being in law enforcement and just and just based on what you were observing the driver of the vehicle you observed was honking his horn and gesturing with this motion would you take that motion as trying to alert people to move out of the way sure. grounds so state us to the form of the question please rephrase how, how how did you yourself take that gesture i took that gesturing as the driver was telling people to get out of his way do you uh, back up did the vehicle pass pretty close to where you were positioned? Yes, the vehicle almost struck my daughter. Do you recall seeing the driver? I looked the driver right in the eyes. And how did the driver look? The driver looked like through me. What do you mean through you? D describe what you mean by through you. I feel that it is very hard to explain that look, but it was very frightening. Do you recall what the driver was wearing? The driver had a like hoodie sweatshirt or sweatshirt on and something on his head. I wasn't sure if it was the hood of the sweater or maybe a beanie hat. It was winter. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Were you able to see any hair? I did see hair, yes. How would you describe the hair? The hair on the head was in front, like dreads down here from what I could see underneath the hood or the hat. And then there was facial hair, beard and mustache. When you observed the vehicle approaching, was the vehicle speeding? When the vehicle was approaching from White Rock, the vehicle was not speeding at that time. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall there being any barriers present where, where you were positioned at? Yes. Do you recall if the vehicle you observed had any tinted windows? I do not recall. Were you able to make out a license plate number of the vehicle being that it had passed so closely by you? No, once the vehicle continued past my position, I was more concerned about my children that were with me. I'm assuming at some point you spoke with the law enforcement about what you saw that evening. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And do you do you recall what agency that was? I do. And what agency was that? The FBI. At what point were you not able to see the SUV once it passed you? I lost sight of the SUV once it went into a bunch of people. Do you recall what date it was that you spoke with the FBI agents on? Was that the same evening or a few days after? It was not the same evening of the parade, <laughs> um, but it was that week. It was within the next few days. The day you spoke with FBI agents, do you recall stating the driver was wearing a red top that appeared to be made out of a sweatshirt-like material? I don't recall exactly what was said to the agent, um, but I do remember the sweatshirt, yes. Yeah. A red sweatshirt? It's possible. Just a little bit ago, you said that, well, when asked the question of did you recall hair for the driver, you stated and made the gesture that the hair was in front. Do you recall saying it? Yes, sir. Do you recall when speaking with FBI agents stating that the hair was pulled back? The hair appeared to be like possibly in a ponytail, but there was it was so full that it was coming forward. Do you recall, well, let me back 
Rebecca, did you did you leave the parade at that point? At what point? After seeing the vehicle. Yes. Were you injured the evening of the, the incident? Yes. You were injured? Yes, I was. Any reason why that's not reported? Probably because I didn't tell anyone else. If you were injured, why not tell anyone? Because I haven't wanted to talk about the traumatic experience that I went through for still reliving the weeks and days after the incident. It doesn't make any sense. You talked to FBI agents a few days where you you said you didn't, to be fair, you said you didn't know. You said it was that week is, is what you said, the same week. You spoke with FBI agents, reported no injury. They didn't ask me about injuries. Well, you would, would it be fair to say that that kind of information would come up when talking to law enforcement, seeing as how you yourself work in law enforcement? <coughs> it just seems odd, don't you think? I do not. Um, I was not physically injured. Oh, but you didn't report this at any time whatsoever. Grounds. Sustained. Already answered. So did you speak to anyone about this in law enforcement? Objection made. Grounds. Overruled. I feel like, no, I did not. <clears throat> did you file any claims re related to the incident? No, I did not. So is today your first time bringing up your alleged injury? No, it is not. At some point you were subpoenaed by the district attorney's office to testify here, to, well, to testify in this trial. Would that be fair to say? Yes, it is. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? From the district attorney's office, it was in July. And do you recall whom you spoke with about the information regarding the subpoena? I contacted the victim witness advocate, Carrie Peterson. You contacted the Miss Peterson after receiving the subpoena. Correct. It, the instructions told me to. Okay. You ever spoke with anyone directly at the district attorney's office? No. I, the, correction. Yes. When I walked in today, I met there and let them know I was here. And then they walked me into a room and I waited until I was called. So before today, you had no interactions with anyone related to the district attorney's office besides the, I think you said, victim advocate? So the victim advocates who have been in connection with and letting me know when to come and all of that. Of the three district attorneys uh, seated to my left at this table, had you had any interactions of, of any kind with any of those three district attorneys? I have not. I believe just for the record, when you asked that, Attorney Basie was just pointing to herself and the two people next to her. Clear, because there's, since there's two tables. What would be the reason for that? Since there's two tables of individuals, I think she wanted to make the witness aware. And I just wanted to point it out for the record since it happened. Hmm. Working in law enforcement for 16 years, I'm sure this isn't your first time being involved in a trial. Would that be fair to say? I have not been in a trial for law enforcement. No, I have not. You've, you've never witnessed a trial, sat at a trial, been in a trial? I have not. Have you ever testified in any uh, in any way before today? Grounds? Um, overall. I have testified before, yes. So it would be fair to say that you would have knowledge of where an alleged defendant in the district attorney would sit in the courtroom, correct? I know where they're sitting, yes. I want to back up a little bit to the observation of the vehicle the evening of November 21st, 2021. While the while you observed the vehicle approaching your position, did you see it strike anyone? I did not see the vehicle strike anyone, no. From your opinion, observing the vehicle approaching your position, did it appear that the, ve the vehicle attempted to strike anyone? Yes. And why would you come to that conclusion? Because I saw an officer have to jump out of the way in order for... The when it was approaching. When the it was, question was, when well, it was approaching. I'm confused. The question was asked. This witness is going to be allowed to answer the question fully without interruption. So I saw that an officer had to get out of the way. He was attempting to stop Mr. Brook from driving through the parade, and he was at the last minute jumped out of the way from the vehicle. Otherwise, he would have been struck. You just used the name Mr. Brooks for the first time that you've been testifying. Would that be fair to say? I don't understand your question. You just used the name Mr. Brooks for the first time since you've been testifying. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say, yes. Why haven't you used that name before? You've been up there for quite some time. I didn't need to. So what changed for the last question that you needed to? I don't understand your question. You just stated that you didn't mention the name before because you didn't need to. So what about the last question that you answered made you feel like you needed to use the name for that question and no question before that? I don't know. Out of curiosity, how did you come to the knowledge of that name? It was on the subpoena I received last week. You just stated a little bit earlier in your testimony that you received your subpoena in July. Now you said last week. Those are both correct. So you received two separate <coughs> subpoenas? Correct. What was the difference between the two? One was from the district attorney's office and one was from you. So the one that you received from the district attorney's office in July didn't have a, a case count? 
caption on it. Okay, what's a case caption? Just one second. One second, Your Honor. Yeah, if I may. I, just question. I really don't know what the relevance is for the purposes of this there, trial. There was no objection at first. But there is no. I'm going to sustain the objection under 906.11 because I don't believe it advances I think, I the think, trial. I think you know where I was getting at with the question. Then you need to ask your question directly. When you were subpoenaed in July by the district attorney's office, the subpoena didn't contain information to the case you were being subpoenaed for? Objection to relevance. Grounds. Sustained. You don't have to answer that. I sustained the objection on that. those grounds. Ask the question I believe that you're trying to ask, not that one. Was the name that you mentioned, Mr. Brooks, anywhere on the subpoena that you received from the district attorney's office in July? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained. That not was relevant. The, what? <sighs> Mind boggling. In July, when you received your subpoena from the district attorney's office, were you even aware of what you were being subpoenaed for? Objection, relevance. Grounds. Sustained, not relevant. She's testifying in a trial that's not relevant that she got subpoenaed? Mr. Brooks, she's here under your subpoena. What? The, you called her as a witness. The, it's the subpoena, subpoena that you, the subpoena is, is, is relevant because Mr. she was Brooks, already subpoenaed. Mr. Brooks, under 11, please ask the witness this, a this relevant mind, and probative question. This is mind boggling. Mind boggling. Remind the jury that the statements of the parties or the attorneys are not evidence so were you aware that it was a chance you would be possibly testifying in this trial yes and did you know who the trial was for Objection. grounds sustained grounds for sustained i've never heard of nobody testifying in a trial that they didn't know who the trial was for Mr. I think Brooks, that's i think i'm that's sustaining very the objection under 906 11 and i'm asking you to move on y'all this ridiculous man Seems to me like a <clears throat> like a lot of your uh, answers are coached. Is that fair to say? No. So the subpoena that you got last week, is that how you learned the name that you used? Objection. Relevance Grounds. For the same reason I argued before. Grounds. Asked and answered. The Different question topic. was, is that the first time that she saw the name? It's not relevant. That Next was not question. asked and answered. That was nor, not asked nor answered. Under 90611, please ask a question, sir. Man, what is y'all people trying to pull up, man? This is... This is ridiculous. Mr. Brooks, if you don't ask another question that's relevant and probative under 906.11, then I will turn the witness over to the state for their cross-examination. And then I should be able to uh, get redirect, right? Your Honor? Ask a question or I will declare the examination by you to be it's, ended. It's not, it's not an examination, it's direct. It's a direct examination, sir. Under 906.11, you are directed to ask a question or I will... I heard, I, heard you, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. Thank you. Next question, please. You know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Yes. Who's the plaintiff? The state of Wisconsin. Is that an entity or a living human being? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Next question. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. Vague. Sustained. Vague. As to the form of the question. Have you ever had any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Do not answer that question. Was there an objection or was that just a ruling? I'm not sure. You're both was talking at the same time. And I directed the witness not to answer that irrelevant question. Ask your next question, sir. Mr. Brooks, ask your next question. I'm going to get to it. So when did you first report your alleged injury? You do not have to answer that question. Next question. Grounds for? 906.11. Sub 1, sub A, sub B, and sub C. Is that law for law? All right. I, I may sit down. Does the state have any questions for this witness? Ma'am, that day on November 21st of last year, you were there with two kids? I was, yes. What were their ages on that date? Um, Objection. Three relevance. and... Overrule the witness may answer. Of course it's going to be overruled. Three and Excuse six. You. And I don't know... Mr. Brooks, sit down. I'm asking the question, sir. Mr. Brooks, please sit down. Mr. Brooks, you're not asking the questions. I'm not saying anything. I would ask you to sit down, please. It is disrespectful to this witness and to the state and to the court. No, it's not. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm merely standing here. Yeah, when you were at the parade on November 21st of, of last year, approximately where were you watching the parade from? Ask the answer to objection. Mr. Brooks, it's cross-examination. Just because you asked the question initially and she answered it does not mean the state doesn't get to follow up on it. So they the state can ask the same question I asked. The state can ask their question. So how Go come ahead. when I did that, Overruled. it was uh, it was the witness may answer. Sustained. I was on Main Street, but right by where it the intersection of White Rock, and I was in the roadway. Um, I'm going to show you my friend Mark to previously admitted into evidence as state season 15. Can you approximate where you and your your kids were watching the parade? Put a dot right where it is. Would be fair to say is to your left. Would have been Pleasant Street? That is correct. Were there barricades blocking Pleasant Street? There were, ba there were barricades that were 
partially black. They were part- they were on Main Street, but partially blocking Pleasant Street as well. Could a car have gone down Pleasant Street? Yes. Actually, overruled. The witness may answer. It's not hearsay. So when the red Very SUV hearsay. came down White Rock Avenue and was making its turn onto East Main Street, as you testified, it could have just gone straight onto Pleasant Street, correct? That Actually, is correct. It's hearsay. She's speaking as um, a hold first on. eyewitness. Um, there's first an objection. Eyewitness. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. The witness may usual. answer. It's always overruled. Sorry, there's a lot of talking. It, your question was, just to clarify, could the vehicle have gone straight onto Pleasant Street? Is that right? Yes. Okay, yes. And where you stayed that you and your kids were partially in the roadway when the red SUV came through? Yes, we were. Objection. That was mischaracterization of what was testified to. Overruled. Can you repeat it? Sure. Were you and your kids um, all in the roadway when the red SUV went through? Yes, we were. You weren't part of the parade, correct? We were not. Okay. So were you standing with other people that were in the roadway? Yes, we were. And was one of your kids going to get candy when the red SUV came through? Yes, my daughter. She's speaking as a first-hand eyewitness. Because she is a first-hand eyewitness. I'm talking about you. At any other time, you you said that this was towards the end of the parade. Is that correct? Yeah, we saw Santa, and he's always the end of the parade. And had your daughter gone to get candy at other times? The entire time. Had she, during the time preceding the red SUV coming through, had she almost been struck? by any other participants in the parade? No, she was nowhere near like where the vehicles were driving through the parade. She was, no. So she's going out to get some candy that had been thrown, I assume, correct? Yes. And overruled. And how close did it come to your daughter? I I wouldn't be able to give an accurate judgment, but it felt very, very close. Had you not pulled your daughter away with that car hit your daughter? Overruled. It's very possible. As the car passed your location, did it increase its speed? Yeah. Do you know where in the roadway it traveled down? Overruled. It was all over the road. You saw it all over the road? Yes. Nothing further. You said you observed multiple officers trying to stop the vehicle. Is that correct? Yes. You described one at, I think you said it was Buckley, right? Yes. Why didn't you report the other officers? that you allegedly saw attempt to stop the vehicle? I don't know what you're asking. The report that you, the interview that was conducted with the FBI, that was who did your interview, correct? Yes. Why was there no, why is it not in the report about the multiple officers that you say you saw attempted to stop the vehicle? I don't know why that wasn't put in the report. Do you recall if you told the FBI agent? It's been a year. I, I believe so, but it's been a year. When you say it's been a year, I'm assuming that means that there's some details you don't quite recall all the way. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So it would be fair to say that if there's details you don't recall, how can you recall half the travel of the SUV that you claim you saw? Can you can you rephrase the question? I'm not understanding. I think it was clear, but I, I'll, I'll ask again. You just acknowledge that there may be some details that you don't quite recall. So would it be fair to say that you don't quite recall half of travel of the vehicle. No, that is not correct. Judging by what you just stated, wouldn't it be fair to say that that's a possibility? No. So you recall all the details of what you observed that evening? November 21st, 2020? No. So what other details do you not recall? <laughs> You're under, how does someone <coughs> recall the details that they don't recall? <coughs> yeah, that's what I wonder. Sustained us to the form of the question. <laughs> Seems very funny. Seems almost as if you're recalling what you want to recall and purposely not recall. Objection. Badgering the witness. Yes, sustained. You do not have to answer that and you are warned. You may not badger or argue with this witness. Next question. Badger or argue? What do you mean? Next question. What do you mean? Don't intimidate the witness is what I mean. How am I intimidating the witness? Badgering the witness by eye rolling, by pursing your lips, <coughs> by making facial movements regarding That's her inti- answers is, is badgering the witness. Are you kidding me? Under 90611, really please can't. ask you really your can't next be question. You can't be serious right now. <coughs> intimidating the witness. What have I done to intimidate the witness? The last question was badgering, which is a form. Can but you, you say, but you say Mr. Brooks, I've made my ruling under 90611. Please ask a question or I'm I will merely, stop the question. How did I intimidate? Under 90611, sub 1, sub A, sub B, and sub C, ask your next question you, or the questioning of this how witness are you will even end. A judge? How are you even a judge? All right, you may step down, ma'am. Thank you. How are you even a judge? Come on, man. 
this must be all about the 62Q trust, right? That you want to be the beneficiary of? I'm going to give the jury their closing instruction. Uh, we are done with testimony for today. Please do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case <laughs> until all the evidence is presented. Thank you. You are excused. Please rise for the jury. And you even don't call yourself a judge as much as bias you could put up in here. Don't even tell the jury the truth. You got no integrity whatsoever. None. I would like an update on whether Mr. Brooks filled out a subpoena for Don Wood. He provided that to the state. Has that been done? No, we haven't received anything, Your Honor, oh. and... Obviously, she can appear here voluntarily if Mr. Brooks <coughs> wants to arrange that. I don't believe a subpoena is necessary. We had subpoenaed her, and she was under state subpoena. So I know that at least some point she had notice. But our position would be, Your Honor, that we will not be responsible in any fashion for producing Miss Woods. Mr. Brooks talks to her on a daily basis. If he wants her here, he can produce her on Monday. Yeah, they ain't got to worry about that. So I just wanted to know, because I know a subpoena form was filled out. If so. I if I wanted to be here, she gonna be here. I agree with so the just, state just that, know that she could certainly appear. It ain't even gotta be no arrangement. All I gotta say is come. She gonna come. That's simple. Mr. Brooks, do you intend to call her as a witness? Because I'm directing yeah, you to said, have her here at 9 all, We said all that at the beginning, man. Like, I don't even want to be in here that much longer. Just do what you gotta do so I can get up out of here. I'm tired of being in the courtroom that has no integrity whatsoever. How can you even call yourself Mr. a judge? Brooks, I need to make... A record of, of I need some to things. make a record too. You don't when am to... I going to get the chance to do that? All right. I need to make a record. He's being removed to the other courtroom. He is yelling at me. He's not going to let me make a statement or make the record that I need to make. I'm finna, I'm finna he hasn't sat anyways, down so we'll do for you the better part of two hours. All you, want. you can hold me in contempt all you want. I'm not holding all you, you in contempt. If it's criminal or civil, so I can hit right. you with you. I need to clear the courtroom because I do need to make. I'm going to give you what you know is coming. I need him to go to the other courtroom because I do need to put some things on the record. Record. The record should reflect the contract between you that and not. Mr. Brooks if it's is criminal, yelling at me. What is the crime? He's, he is, Who makes the claim? And what is, is I will make the record when we get back. I will step off. But Mr. Brooks, you're being it taken no to Mr. the next no courtroom. Brooks. Don't try to address me Thank like you. that like we cool. You don't have no integrity. How can you even call yourself a judge? Making tacky agreements. Being biased. Judicial misconduct. Trying to steal somebody's sex. No, I'm muted, so. Am I muted? As the record reflects, I sustained. His voice got louder. He continued to stand. He was being very argumentative with that witness who, again, he called. Given his posture, given his staring, given his pursing of his lips, given the way that he kept asking the same question in different ways, but over and over, not satisfied with the responses that had been given or the court sustaining the objections, that is why I made a finding at that time and sustain the objection for badgering. It was Mr. Brooks who asked me what that meant, and I indicated it's a form of intimidating a witness. So for the record, I think it's important to note that the two photographs the defendant attempted to show that witness and presumably put into evidence uh, depicted what I believe to be uh, the defendant and Ms. Patterson's 15-year-old daughter, as well as their new grandchild, the daughter's child who was born uh, around May 1st of 2022. I think that there was ample grounds for the court to end Ms. Patterson's testimony when it did, but for um, just in case that becomes an issue going forward, I'll make an offer of proof that Ms. Patterson, if asked about those pictures, would have testified that she did not provide them to Mr. Brooks. She provided them to a person named Michelle, who I believe is a mutual friend, who in turn provided them to Dawn Woods, the defendant's brother, excuse me, mother, long day, uh, who then, that was the person who provided them to Mr. Brooks. Um, if she were forced to answer questions about this supposed letter that Mr. Brooks was claiming to exist, she would have testified that she has not written a letter to Mr. Brooks since he came into our jail on November, well, November 22nd. She never went on November 21st either. Uh, at any point between his being taken into custody and today. Um, it's my understanding that he has tried to call her from the Waukesha, Waukesha County Jail on 37 occasions. She has never accepted a single one of those phone calls. And finally, during the, uh, the early lunch break, I was informed by the bailiff staff that the defendant was twice offered to go to his cell to retrieve that letter that he talked about. He declined both times. Thank you. I appreciate the record being made. I will now unmute Mr. Brooks and ask him 
if uh, there's anything he needs to make a record of at this point on the topics that have been raised. Sir, so this anything you wish to address before we break for the day? Yeah, I can. I wasn't really hearing everything that was just said good, but uh, why haven't I been uh, given the chance to offer all my filings and the evidence when I already stated that before? Mm -hmm. I would no like all my filings. I would like every single filing that I filed placed into evidence. Every last one of them that has yet to be done. I put I put you on notice and I've stated it on the record even before I even had a chance to start calling witnesses and put on a defense that I haven't even been adequately been able to do. So this is something that's been stated on the record numerous times. I did hear a reference to whatever he, what was he just told me. Whatever, whatever he was just talking about is it, 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 in, in regards to uh, me going to get the letter or whatever the case may be. First of all, it's not just one letter. Like I stated before, it's multiple letters. And for and for somebody that don't even know to try to tell me what I got, like you need to you need to cut it out, man. Y'all need to cut it out. Seriously, stop it. It seems to me that it seems to me that all y'all been wanting to do is gang up, be biased, be prejudiced, and gang up four against one. Then you sit up there earlier and made a record before the, before the lunch to the theory and made a record about all this stuff that happened in Nevada. That's other acts of evidence, ain't it? How was you allowed to put that on record and not even be truthful about everything that you said? But not one time did somebody say, no, we gonna strike that. Not one time. But if it had been me, it would've got struck. Or if it had been me, it'd've been a problem. If it had been me, I'd have been held in contempt. Why was the bond not addressed? Why was the statement of particulars not addressed? No filings that, no filings that I seem to file need to be addressed. After you sat there and told me that that's what I needed to do, then you wanna refer to the waiver of of counsel, which again, for the record, you accepted it the way that I gave it to you, which clearly states on there, I do not waive my right to assistance of counsel. And you accepted that, but you still turn around and continue to violate my Sixth Amendment rights, violate my First Amendment rights by telling me what I can and can't say, which I have the right to say whatever I want to say and to be heard. That's the First Amendment. You sit up here and talking about a fourth option that you came with out of the blue for Illinois versus Allen when there is no fourth option. Then you try to sneak some other case laws in that you just came up with today. I don't know if you came up with that when you was on one of your breaks that you take, but that it's awful funny that it never got mentioned before. You've repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly made false a false record. You wanna you wanna sit up here and perpetuate all this disruptive behavior and this, that, and the third. When you knew from the point the, from the point of the start of this trial, one that I wasn't prepared, two that I did not understand the proceeding. But yet still you choose to find a way to get around it. Just like you found a way to get a, get around answering what your name was, which you're a public servant, the name that you have on file with the Secretary of Treasury and State, however you want to put it, you were asked for a certified copy of your oath of office, which you stated on the record you would not provide, didn't give any case law why you don't have to provide that, have yet to prove subject matter jurisdiction for the record, have yet to show that you even have a license to practice law, haven't proven that yet, and neither has the prosecution. Where's the license? Why can't I place your oath of office into the record? Why can't I make that part of evidence? The oath that you haven't even honored, not one bit. Doing enough to keep your face clean doesn't constitute being fair, doesn't constitute being impartial. When the jury was selected,